care what everybody else thinks. I can tell you what this team thinks. We expect to win every week. The same story. We couldn't do it. We didn't have an answer for uh, Randy Moss today. Perfectly written. Do you have a game plan that would work against them? If you do, leave it here. I'm as upset, obviously, as I can be. No handshakes. No excuses. No regrets. The perfect system. We're trying to win. We're trying to kill teams. We're trying to blow them out if we can. Don't tell me about leads in this league. Until the final gun goes off, you know it's not a win. That's about it. They're, they're a great football team. 11 weeks, and there's been no change. The questions will always be there. What will your answers be? Testing Next one, up, two, try and fill it. Four, testing one, two, three. Which brings us to tonight. A night that brings Bill Belichick back close to home. He grew up in Annapolis, Maryland, a half hour away with the Naval Academy. Is started his coaching career in Baltimore with the Colts, making $25 a week. And on hand, a man who defines so many of the Baltimore Colts' great days and the man who coached, coached the only undefeated start-to-finish season in NFL history, Don Shula, not just uh, here with us tonight watching the game, but Don will be in the booth in the third quarter. The headline story for the night, as Michelle Tafoy and Susie Calber will be reporting from the sidelines, is the weather. It's cold, it is raw, and it is windy. And the wind could play a significant role in the game tonight. The wind is gusting 25 to 30 miles per hour. The wind chill in the 20s. It's very hard to watch sometimes as the hot dog wrappers fly by us, Mike. It is. New England they won the toss. They will receive, and the kickoff comes down in the end zone and is a touchback. So Ellis Hobbs lets it go, and Tom Brady and the Patriots offense will take over from the 20-yard line. Well, he has uh, done it all. He has it all, except for records in the National Football League, and he's on pace for a record season. 39 touchdowns and just four interceptions, nine times in a game this year. One quarterback has had four interceptions, and he's had four in their first 11 games. And he will be tested by this Ravens defense. It's about pressure, about getting after the quarterback, and the Patriots have become a throw-ball football team. Lawrence Maroney, the lone back, three receivers to start the game. And the throwing begins. Gain of five to Wes Welker, who has 82 catches, six shy of the NFL leader, T.J. Hushman's up. Based on Philadelphia last week, Jaws, a lot of people talked about a blueprint to beat the Patriots, which is, of course, silly because the Patriots win all the games. But if you try to beat them, it would seem to me you have to be willing to lose 100 to nothing. You're going to have to do game. onside kicks. You have to do fourth down stuff. You have to take all the chances in the world and be willing to get blown out. But you're going to have to take the gamble. You're going to have to take some chances. And this is the Ravens defense that is built that way. They will take chances. Empty backfield. Five wide, second and five. Brady to Welker again. First down to west to the 32-yard line. Tight end Benjamin Watson introduces us to the rest of the New England record-setting pace offense. Hey, Mommy. We got Matt, the entertainer light. This guy keeps us laughing all the time. At guard, we got Stephen Neal, who's our resident NCAA championship wrestler. Tom Brady, needs no explanation, the world's best dressed man. 81, Moss. That's all you got to say, Moss. And West, the natural world. Moss, who has 16 touchdown catches, leading the NFL. Welker, as often in motion, first called run of the night, Maroney. Ray Lewis waiting along with Kelly Gray. Only a game of a couple. Here's Samari Rolls, introduce us to the Baltimore defense. What's up, America? Introducing the D-line. We got Nada and Buddy Lee, Kelly Gray. The backers, off the edge, T-Sizzle, the mad backer, Bart Scott, and in the middle, the GOAT. In the back end, we bring over 80 career interceptions, and we will need them all tonight. That's free safety in football every week. And it reminds you everybody out there, Sean Taylor, we love you. On the minds of every player who took the field in the NFL this week. Second and nine. Three receivers for Brady, a lot of protection, a lot of time. And the deep ball down the sideline, hauled in by Dante Stallworth. Brought down at the 25 by Samara Roll, by the face mask. Tack on the gain, it's 42. It's all about protection for Tom Brady. He had time in the pocket to survey the field. 
personal foul. Face mask, number 22, defense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Tom Brady has mobility like no other quarterback. Be able to move in the pocket. Let the play develop down the field. Watch Tom Brady. Haloti Nata blitzes up the middle. Tom moves his left. Buys time. Then finds Dante Stallworth down the sideline. We talk about the quarterback. We talk about the wide receivers and tight end running backs. The offensive line for the Patriots is outstanding. From the 12, Maroney circling inside the 10 and brought down at about the 8 with a marker down in the secondary. Corey Ivey made the tackle. 12 men, defense, five-yard penalty. It's still first down. That's how you that's how you really risk everything. You put 12 guys out there, Joss. Yeah, this is amazing <laughs> right here, Tony. Look at this. 102 possessions. That's what the Patriots offense have had, excluding kneel downs at the two minutes before the half at the end of the game. They've scored on 50% of their possessions. A touchdown. That is amazing. The average around the league, look at that, 20%. And Baltimore has just helped the cause with a couple of flags. First and five. Here's another flag. Free play for Brady, who is hauled down. Again, the offside flag. And Terrell Suggs knows he was the guilty party. Offside, number 55, defense. Five-yard penalty, first down. So we see then the, the blueprint to try to beat them is to first put 12 guys out there and then go offside on the next and play. And just give them a first down. That's right. This is one of the best sustaining offenses in the National Football League. They have more 10-play drives than any team in the league. So give them another first down. So Brian Billick has watched uh, the one sure thing on this uh, team the last seven years, the defense, although it has been a bit beat up. Allow the Patriots the one big pass, the couple of flags. I don't know if it's going to be a first down. The goal, and it's still first down. Right. It is not a new first down and first and goal because the penalty was half the distance to the goal. So we have the rare first and one, I think, here. Yes, first and one. I could make that call. <laughs> Moss in motion. And Brady runs Maroney for the first down inside the two. Terrell Suggs came around and made the play. But it now will be first and goal for New England. The Patriots have run the ball twice on this opening drive. That's more runs than they had the entire first half last week against Philadelphia. They had 29 plays, 28 pass plays, one run, a Heath Evans touchdown from the two-yard line, about the yard and a half, and 28 of those passes were from the shotgun. Brady loves the gun. They just put in 12 guys who weigh 360 pounds each. Well, they put in their goal line in yeah. Junior Seau and Mike Vrabel, and Brady throwing for Watson, broken up by Ray Lewis. But a great job by Lewis staying with the tight end. It's second and goal. Excellent coverage by Ray Lewis. When you have an aggressive linebacker like Ray Lewis, the play caller, Josh McDaniels, will try to take advantage of that. Ray Lewis did not get sucked in by the play fake. He went back to the back of the end zone and stripped the ball away from Benjamin Watson. Terrific play by Ray Lewis. The run with Heath Evans. He is stopped. By the combination of Bart Scott and Nata. Third and goal coming up. One thing the Ravens do well, teams get down inside the 20. Their red zone defense has been solid this year. They've seen a lot of field goals scored against them. But in terms of touchdowns, second in the NFL. That is outstanding defense, and it would be a win for them mentally if they can hold the Patriots to a field goal here. Third and goal. At the three. Timeout taken by the Ravens. So a third goal for Brady and the Pats on their opening drive of Monday Night Football. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by Samsung, the official HDTV of the NFL. Bud Light, endless refreshment from start to finish. Bud Light keeps it coming. Hyundai, 
Discover the power of thoughtful engineering at thinkaboutit.com. And T. Rowe Price, providing investment management excellence for over 70 years. Invest with confidence. Back here in Baltimore, Patriots go empty. Kevin Falk in motion, third and goal from the three. Moss and Watson, bottom of the screen. Baltimore with only one pure defensive lineman on the field. And Brady surveys. Lots of black shirts covering. Keeps the play alive with that mobility and throws for the incompletion. Watson should have caught it for the touchdown, but could not come down with it. And the field goal unit on for the Patriots. Well, that was outstanding pass coverage. There is no doubt about it. Tom Brady had all day in the pocket to survey the field. Looks right, looks left. Look at him stay out in balance, looking for receivers. Moves from the pocket, finds Watson. He drops it. Had a chance. You have to come down to the ground if it's your impetus taking you ground, taking you down and come up with the ball. He did not. Steven Gostowski for a 21-yard field goal through the wind. Bangs it through. The Patriots the last 21 times in a row that they had first and goal at the one and scored a touchdown. Stop there. A little bit of a win for the Ravens. So New England keeps it for the first 435 of the opening quarter. Good defense in the end zone, uh, keeping Brady away from a 40th touchdown pass. And it's 3 nothing New England as Baltimore will get it for the first time tonight. Doesn't that speak to who New England is? That they score three points and it feels like a win for Baltimore. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yaman Figures is the uh, deep man for the Ravens. He's a rookie who has put the ball on the ground a couple of times, has shown some explosiveness in the return game in a punt, to the punt back for touchdown, and a good kickoff return average. Kostowski will have the ball held for him by Rodney Harrison, and into the wind, Yaman Figures takes it from the 20. Billy Washington had the edge and pushes Figures out at the 29-yard line. Earlier today, if you did not hear the news, Steve McNair was placed on injured reserve. He's out for the rest of the season with his shoulder injury. He will have surgery on that injured shoulder. So McNair, who helped lead this team to 13 wins last year, is done for the year. That means the job is now in the hands of Kyle Bowler, the 19th overall pick in the draft five years ago. He started his very first game as a rookie with the Ravens. has been a couple of years a full-time starter, in and out of the lineup since then. His record as a starter, 20 and 19. Two and three this year in 2007. They need to run it tonight. Willis McGahee starts it. Gain of nine to the 38-yard line. Ron, uh, Baltimore has struggled, to say the least, on offense. How do they try to stay in the game tonight on this side? Mike, you said it a moment ago. They've got to stay with the power running game. I'm not talking about those misdirection counter trays. they got to get a body and a body and win the physical battle up front. I think they will stay with that plan as long as the game is close. That is not static on your screen, but <laughs> snow flurries. No, whoa. no. As LeRon McLean leads the way for McGahee for a first down. Bumped down by Mike Vrabel to the 46-yard line. And remember, New England plays tonight without Roosevelt Colvin, who's out for the rest of the season. It's way too early to say what I'm going to say. Uh-oh. But I'm telling you what sports writers all over this press box are thinking. They're thinking, well, maybe this is the night. They held him out of the end zone, just gave up three. They had two nice runs in a row. And they're thinking to themselves, that would be history if I was here to cover that game if Baltimore won. Trying to go on the quick count from the 45, and the whistles come down. A false start on the Ravens. False start. Number 88. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. After their fourth penalty, center Mike Flynn introduces us to the Raven offense. Let's start off with my buddies, the offensive line. At left tackle, the living legend, Jonathan Ogden. At right tackle, the pride of Animosa, Iowa, Marshall Yanya. At running back, from the U, Willis McGahee. And our quarterback, the California kid, Kyle Bowler. And last but not least, the oldest receiver in the league and still getting the job done, Eric Mason. McGahee carries for about three yards. Richard Seymour in on the tackle. That, that was a bit of a harsh joke. Derek Mason in his 11th year. He's not the oldest receiver in the league. That belongs to Keenan McCardo. <laughs> Troy Brown would have been the oldest receiver in the game. Just activated by the Patriots, but he's inactive 
for this evening. He will be eligible to play the rest of the year. The big missing part, as the ball blew off the uh, line of scrimmage there for a second, big missing part of this Ravens offense, Todd Heath. Pro bowler, 75, 73 catches the last couple of years. Missing a game for the sixth time in the last eight with a, a very painful hamstring that has uh, been termed a thigh injury. Boy, they missed the tight ends in this offense. Wolfork, flush bowler, who dumps it down to McGay. Contacted by Bruski, tackled by Rodney Harrison. And before third down and about 10 is the New England off defense with Vince Wolfork. Up front, 94, the Hellraiser. Number 93, the Man Eater. In the back with the linebackers, number 50, I can do anything. 54, Brew, 55, Mr. Untouchable. Number 96, AD Showtime. Back in the back, 27, Hollywood. 36, the Quiet Storm. 37, the Hitman. And of course, number 22, who the man sent me? He's going to be a rich man at the end of the year. Bowler is pressured. He throws and is incomplete. The coverage by Ellis Hobbs. The pressure by Richard Seymour. It'll be fourth down and Baltimore will punch. Is it possible, Mike, that Wolf Fork doesn't know any of their names? <laughs> is, it, is it possible that everyone could have a nickname like that? No. no they, they do, but he yeah, knows but, their names. Oh, okay. oh. What do you think, Charles? you think he knew all the names? I believe, yeah. I believe he did. Right. By the way, uh, we saw Kyle Buller come off the field. He looked a little bit... Uh, a little bit woozy coming off of you. I think he took a shot right there. Took a shot in the mouth. You got it, bud. Sam Cook's going to kick it away. Wes Welker is back deep to receive for New England. Cook trying to kick it toward the sideline. He'll just bounce and come down on the roll. New England has 83 yards to traverse. At least that punt didn't plug like last week. <laughs> <laughs> see if the Ravens defense can do it again on the next drive. Patriots, the sixth team since the Dolphins' undefeated season in 1972 to start 11 0. You see the column on the right? You don't need a super team to knock off the unbeaten team in December. It's been teams with average records. As you see, three of those six teams to start 11 0 have gone on to win the Super Bowl. Three of the five, the Patriots being the sixth. 88 yards for New England to go. The drive starts at the 12. Brady's pass is high and incomplete. It's windy. We go to the sideline. Here's Michelle Tafoya. Yeah, thanks for pointing out that wind first. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the first trip back to Baltimore for former Ravens linebacker Adalis Thomas, and he said he's going to be very interested in watching a matchup between two great football minds tonight. His current teammate, Tom Brady, and his former coach, uh, defensive coordinator Rex Ryan for the Ravens. During the week of pre uh, preparation, he said he tried to give Brady a lot of hints, but he ultimately just told Tom Thing. Michelle, I was trying to explain Brady's pass, not your hair. <laughs> Second and ten. <laughs> and out of the gun, a run with Maroney, who gets away from Haloti Nata, but cannot get away from Samari Roll. Gain of about two yards. It'll be third and eight. You know, the last possession, the third down play, outstanding job by the Ravens defense. Brady at the top has dropped. Nowhere to go with the football. This is why the Ravens only kept one defensive lineman on the field. They put athletes out there in coverage. They did an outstanding job with their bracket coverage. Brady forced out of the pocket. Incomplete. Great job by the Ravens defense to hold New England to a field goal. With 13 guys in the end zone on that play. <laughs> <laughs> they did their job. <laughs> Third and eight. It's a blitz situation for the Ravens. Kevin Falk stays in, tries to help the blocking. The pass is incomplete, broken up by Samari Roll. This is the tough direction here for throwing in the wind. And even with Brady's arm, it was a problem on that drive. And an excellent job by the Ravens scheme once again. I thought they would blitz. They only rushed three. Samari Roll was able to drive the route because he had help over the top from Ed Reed, as you see number 20 coming to your picture. So that meant Samari Roll could gamble on the out route. Excellent design by Rex Ryan. Oh, here's a rare moment. A Patriots punch only the 25th of the year for Chris Hansen. Here we are, quarter one, game 12. Fielded by figures with a marker down. A fair catch made at the 44-yard line. Let's check the flag. The kick was 41, depending on 
what kind of penalty we have here. Saw Samari rolling on a couple of those plays. Samari rolled, Chris McAllister, both starting at During their tonight. kick, personal foul, number 29, the receiving team, hitting a player out of bounds. That's a 15-yard penalty from the end of the kick. It'll be first down, timeout. It's Derek Martin's flag. It is the fifth flag on Brian Billick's team in the first nine minutes of the game. Can't beat the unbeatable with mistakes like that. Two drives, three points for the most prolific offense in the NFL. Moss and Brady discuss what they'll do on the next drive. They're going into the win. Meantime, Rex Ryan and that uh, Ravens defense, which has been the calling card of this franchise the last eight years. Thus far, decent job. First carry, McGahee. He's going to lose a yard. Let's go down to the sideline. After the Richard Seymour tackle, here's Susie. Like Kyle Bowler is going to be the Ravens starter the rest of the way. So the question is, which Kyle Bowler are we going to see? In his five years here, there's been ups and there's been downs. There's been criticism and there's been compliments. His top receiver, Derek Mason, insists that this Kyle Bowler is much more confident, patient than he used to be. He's got faith and trust in his guys. Plus, when he first started, he had the weight of the world on his shoulders. Now he can just feel free to just play football. He doesn't have to feel like he's the savior anymore. He faces second and 11 in a pass rush and puts it up and out of bounds. An incomplete. We'll have third and 11. Ron, what does Bowler, after the pressure by Taiwan, what does he do well and where does he need to improve to become a number one in this league? The one thing when you look at Kyle Bowler, he does have an NFL arm. He can make all those stick throws. I mean, he can throw those lasers. I think Kyle Bowler continually has to work on his mechanics to become a more consistent player. You'll see a great throw and then you'll see a one hopper into the ground. Just lacks consistency right now. Not the good situation to be in against this Patriots defense, third and 11. Get the five-man rush, and to the face, Bowler gets away from the swipe by Adelis Thomas and completes it to DeVar Darling, who keeps his balance. And Darling out of bounds at the 18-yard line. A pickup of 53 yards. James Sanders pushed him out of bounds. Well, we saw the laser arm of Kyle Bowler under duress. What an incredible play by Kyle Bowler. Here comes the pressure from behind. Adelius Thomas almost gets him. Green almost gets him. And look at that stick throw. Darling forces the missed tackle, takes it upfield. But what a throw by Kyle Bowler. The pass and run becomes the longest Ravens pass play of the year. And now they're messing with the play clock as they change personnel. In the red zone on the Patriots. Timeout, Brian Billick and Baltimore. Five penalties, two timeouts taken here in the first 10 minutes. But the Ravens have it in the right zone. It's a game. Still a game. <laughs> 53-year-old Brian Billick, who was the offensive coordinator for the team that scored the most points in the NFL's history. The 98 Minnesota Vikings then came here. Inherited a defensive base team. Rode him to Super Bowl 35. The offense has struggled throughout the last few years. McGahee on the run for three to the 50. And Vince Wolfert, the first rounder from 2004, made the tackle. Kyle, Kyle Bowler must keep this offense on schedule. The last drive was stopped by the first and 10, five-yard penalty, first and 15. Hard to overcome that against the Patriots defense. Right now, you get in that second and six, second and seven, manageable situation. This is where Kyle Bowler has his entire playbook available. Deron McLean, the fullback, tries to clear up that. What a dance by McGahee to the right, back to the left, and... Willis McGahee takes it to the nine-yard line. Willis McGahee came over via the trade from Buffalo. Contract uh, was a distraction with the Bills, limited to 990 yards last year. Came here and signed a $40 million deal. He's called himself still the best running back in the National Football League. He has not been at that point, but he has been very productive for the Ravens. His contract isn't a distraction for him. It's a $40 million contract at the moment. <laughs> And the Ravens want him to get the ball. They don't want to pass here. They want the ball handed to him. On third and one, he's probing for that yard. The lean forward might get it. Teddy Bruschi wrapped him up. But the spot should be good for Baltimore first and goal. 
This has been the problem. This has been the criticism of the Baltimore offense all year from the Baltimore defense has been we pass too much close to the goal line. Spent a lot of money on Willis McGahee. Give him the ball. Play to your strength for a smash mouth team. Yeah, right, Jaws? That's and, what they and, Tony, we heard defensive players whining all weekend from the Ravens, yes. but in actuality, the Ravens' offense has run more snaps than their defense has been on the field. So all that whining sometimes falls on deaf ears. They think like we're not going to research those. But, it, but it's been non-productive close to the goal line. They that is set up for a lot of field good. goals. But if they were to get a touchdown here, a lot of people would be staying with this game a lot longer than we thought. <laughs> well, you are selling, my friend, and I love it. <laughs> First and goal. Back to the game. Patriots are waiting for that. Only a yard there. James Sanders up from the safety spot. Leading the many New England Patriots there. Harrison and Green come off the bottom of the pile. This Patriots defense is last in the National Football League. Visits to the red zone have been rare, but productive for the opposition. It probably just stuns them that they're having to defend so close to the goal. Yeah, you don't you don't see the last in anything from the from the New England Patriots, except in their red zone defense. McGahee has run it eight times. Bowler will throw. It is caught at the four-yard line by Derek Mason. Mason, the busiest pass catcher on this team, his 80th catch of the year. Ron, with a strong arm like Bowler's, that can help cutting through this wind, which is a little bit at his back right now. Yeah, no question about it. He is throwing with the wind. He made a real nice read there. He looked at the back of the end zone, kind of the meet me at the corner out to Mark Clayton. It wasn't available. He came back inside to Derek Mason. And threw it a little bit low, but it was a safe pass. Third and goal. Bowler has time, and it's touchdown. Derek Mason, his third of the year. Leads to the question on everybody's lips in this stadium and watching at home is tonight the night. Tonight the night. It's tonight the night because everybody sort of feels it might happen. They may not have felt it would happen here, but the Baltimore Ravens are the only other team playing, so they got a shot. The veteran Matt Stover, who kicked for Belichick when this franchise was back in Cleveland, adds the extra point. Nine play, 70-yard drive, capped off by the touchdown to Mason. Kyle Bowler showing great poise in the pocket. Finds Mason open and sticks it in there before Adelius Thomas could get over the top. He focuses, he delivers on the money. Tony, Tony, Tony. 7-3, to three, Baltimore. That's what you want. I mean, Kyle Bowler has had a reputation and I think deserved over the last couple of years of not necessarily making those throws, right, Mike? He's... he's not, he's failed in major opportunities, which is why he didn't start the year, why they brought McNair in. Now Bowler has got the job for the rest of the year. If he can make that throw, they love him. He made the big pass to DeVar Darling on that drive, but McGahee with very purposeful rushing. I mentioned five players had Miami ties on this day that Sean Taylor was buried, the former Washington Redskins safety. You heard those players before the game. They are playing with a unique purpose here tonight. You can see it in the passionate running of McGahee, the emotion of Ray Lewis pre-kick, the moment of silence with tears in his eyes. You know their heads and their hearts were in Miami where the memorial service went on today. And there is a unique passion, I think, that they are bringing to the game tonight. Stover kicks this one. Tough to catch. Ellis Hobbs did a great job running up on it. He's brought down at the 26-yard line. I mentioned the Miami Hurricanes playing with a heavy heart. Listen to the three Canes on the Ravens' side before the game tonight. Son, it's the only thing we play for tonight. Do you understand that? Not a game. This is family right now. And one of our brothers is going home to rest. Let's send him home right. Not by the outcome of the game, but by how you play the game. Let's give everything we got for 21 tonight. Let's give everything we got for that man tonight, man. Because we have family, y'all. You hear me? We came out I mentioned Ray is like the godfather of that Miami fraternity. Reed and McGahee were teammates on Miami's national championship team in 2001. 
with the late Sean Taylor. The empty formation of the Patriots. This is a formation Rex Ryan loves to attack. No one in the backfield to pick up the blitz if someone comes clean. And they do load. And it's Corey Ivy off the slot. Ivy the sack. Loss of seven. They overloaded Jaws to the right side of the New England offense, and there weren't enough bodies to pick up Ivy coming in. Well, from a philosophical approach, Rex Ryan believes if you're going to put a quarterback in the backfield without a back, we're going to make him get rid of the football quickly by blitzing. He'll get rid of the football, maybe get a five-yard gain, but are you willing to let your quarterback take hit after hit after hit to gain five yards? I think the page will change up and on, keep their on backs the other back. side, if you're Rex Ryan, are you willing to get beat deep if he has a split second long enough? That's a risk reward, but so far it's working for the Ravens. Back into the quarter, Maroney running to the left. Going to get back toward the initial line of scrimmage. We'll have third and 11. I think throwing the ball in the air deep going this way is tough because of the wind. One thing the wind does here tonight, it helps the defense because the 50-yard in the air throw may be tough. So now you have a shorter field to defend, and it may help Baltimore's plan here tonight. No question about it, Mike. They can sit in those routes. It'll be the end of the quarter, and when you are a big underdog at home on a Monday night, you want something to believe in. The first quarter gave them reason to believe. Through one in Maryland, the undefeated Patriots trail on Monday Night Football. Baltimore Ravens leading New England 7-3 as we get set for the second quarter. On Monday Night Football, Michelle Tafoya, Susie Culver on the sideline, Ron Jaworski, Tony Kornheiser, and Mike Tirico up here in the booth. Patriots have trailed after the first quarter a couple of times this year. Week three of the Buffalo game, they were down 7-3 after one. And that game against Indianapolis about a month ago, it was 3-0 Colts after one. We start with third and 11. Brady quick count. Pressured. Putting it up for grabs. And it's caught but dropped by Jabbar Gaffney. We have a penalty marker down as they were chasing Brady. I think Logan Mankins is going to be called for holding. Holy number 70. the third Patriots drop, and you saw what I was talking about with the deep ball. That ball just died in the air. First, the pressure. Well, you'll see Tom Brady. They're actually changing the game plan now. Haloti Nada with pressure up the middle forces Brady to move. An unusual throw for Tom Brady that really was a ball that he should not throw. Second punt for Chris Hansen. Catching every punt is an adventure because of the wind. Swirling and gusting. Kick will be just about 40 yards and good field position for the Ravens at the 33. What's going on here tonight? We open the show talking about pressure. Watch. No one on the left side blocked. The Ravens overload with five. No one in the backfield. Corey Ivey unblocked at Tom Brady. These are the pressure schemes designed by Rex Ryan that right now are breaking down the pass protection, the offensive line protections for the New England Patriots. And there is Buddy Ryan. There is Buddy Ryan. I played for Buddy Ryan. I will tell you this about Buddy's defense. It was not to hit the quarterback. It was to knock him out of the game. Rex Ryan carries that same philosophy. Oh, Buddy could design some defense. From the 34, here is McGahee running to the right. Gets to the 37-yard line. Did you knit him that blanket that he's wearing? <laughs> Where, did he wear that in Philadelphia? You know, I, 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 that I think blanket? I, I think my wife did. She had some wow. time off, and Buddy got rid of me. Well, what's great is Rex <laughs> was on the field with his son before the game. So he had three generations of the Ryans, and Rex's son, Buddy's grandson, was in an arm sling. And I said, what happened to your arm? He said, I heard it playing football at recess. I said, were you on offense or defense? He said, defense. I said, good. <laughs> Absolutely. Grandpa, you probably <laughs> sent somebody <laughs> at him. You can stay in the family, him. right? <laughs> Second and seven. Pressure picked up. Boy, that rocket arm of Bowler has looked good tonight. Complete to Mason to the 48. A first down picked up. The gain was 15. Richard Seymour brought the heat. Right. Now I'm going to keep selling this game, as Go. you said, Jaws. Yeah, you gave, me, you gave me the mud bowl the last week. The Ravens this one. have lost five in a row. Five games in a row. They've been crushed 
in the last the four games, giving up over 30 points, which they never did last year. If they could win this game and stop this sense of dissolving that they had, it'd be, it would make their season all right at this point. No question about it. Kyle Bowler very sharp at this point in the game. From the 48, McGahey sees no hole, tries to dance to the left. Only going to gain a yard or two. Thomas brought him down, and here's Susie. Mike, during warm-ups, I asked Kyle Bowler how he felt about the win tonight, and he said he really didn't mind as long as he was throwing into it, which is the direction they're going right now because he said the ball can really cut through. What he thought was more dangerous was going in the other direction. Well, he looked pretty darn good doing that, too. He said he has to be really careful about the outside stuff, but really he felt just as long as it's not <laughs> raining. He likes these conditions. He's fine with it. Susie, are you sure he said throwing into the wind? <laughs> <laughs> McGahey into the secondary. Stopped by Gabe Sanders at the 31. A gain of 15. Jason Bat Brown and Ben Grubbs on the offensive line help clear the path. McGay, he says he's still the best back in the league. Is that right? Did we he, that he looked Start good the right there. Okay. Looked good right there. And if I, he does that a few more times, he'll get some votes if they if they hold an election. Nice job with the design of the play by Rick Neuheisel. Ran that fake motion around the back, held the backside defensive end. McGay, he running to the right this time uh, for a yard, and Ty Warren makes the tackle. We visited with Vince Wolfork last night, and he spoke of Willis McGahee and their common thread, their University of Miami days, and knowing that Willis McGahee can still bring it as well as any running back in the NFL. Vince Wolfrick, I'll tell you, what a class act. What a gentleman. I was very, very impressed with our sit-down meeting with him yesterday, and he once again is playing at the Pro Bowl level. Second and nine, Musa Smith is the back. Fuller looking to throw, looking to throw the out. Incomplete. It was open for Mason. That wind makes it so tough to drop one of those balls in to that spot. And I'll bet if he was throwing with the wind, it probably would have been a better throw. That thing, like, hit a wall at about 25 yards down the field. What's interesting about Bowler, of course, is that he, he really got rocked here. I mean, he, he didn't do well. He was a first-round pick. By his own admission, he was put into games much too early. He wasn't ready. A lot of people thought he would leave this team. He signed a one-year extension this year. It wasn't that big a deal because people thought he might leave. Now he finds himself in a position to pull off something great. It's third and nine. They need about five yards for field goal range, and Musa Smith will try to run it. Only gains a couple of yards, and Billick has a decision here. The ball's sitting at about the 27-yard line. It is right at the edge because of the wind of Matt Stover's field goal range. And Billick's going to go for it here on fourth down. Yeah, it's interesting. I was down on the field about, a, about an hour and a half ago with Matt Stover right at this area of the field. And he was knocking him through from about 45 yards. So I'm a little bit surprised that they're going to go for it here. I think this is in his range, even though it's into the wind. He was hitting them solid. It is right at the edge with the wind. Of course, it may have picked up a little bit since about an hour and a half ago as well. Fourth and six. Bowler throwing. Punt. Mason first down. What a throw. What a throw under pressure. The one thing you're seeing about Kyle Bowler tonight oh. is the willingness to hang in the pocket. Look down the gun barrel and take a hit. Deliver the football. This is an outstanding throw right here. Derek Mason getting both toes down inbounds. Check this throw out right here. Good balance, good delivery, under oh. pressure, takes a vicious hit, and delivers the ball on the money. That is playing quarterback in the National Football League. The hit was by his old teammate in Dallas Thomas again. <laughs> George, you gave him a 1% chance to win this game I told going you, in. No, it went up to 2% before kickoff. Ravens back in the red zone. And Bowler wants more. That one high sailed a little bit. It's incomplete. The pass is intended for Dan Wilcox at Appalachian State. He returns to the lineup. Only been active for one game. His left foot and ankle have been a problem. I spoke with Rick Neuheisel, who carries the title of offensive coordinator, even though the plays are called by Brian Billick. And Rick pointed out, ball control is huge. That's a little bit of what Philadelphia was able to do. Limit the possessions for the Patriots, and thus far, that's exactly what's happened for the Ravens.
Play 10 of this drive. The run of two for McGahee, tackled by his former Canes teammate, Vince Wolford. And a third down coming up. Mike, in preparation for this game, one of the most amazing stats I found was the New England Patriots have had only 111 offensive possessions this season. That's the fewest in the National Football League, yet they're scoring over 40 points a game. But the best chance to win is to keep that guy we just saw a moment ago, Tom Brady, keep him on the sideline. And that includes those kneel-down possessions you talked about before. And there were nine of those, actually only 102, where they tried to score. Third down, in field goal range, don't want to turn it over if you're Baltimore. Bowler caught for the tight end Wilcox, who shed the tackle of Ellis Hobbs momentarily. He's down at the 11. Hobbs is slow to get up. And now we'll have a field goal attempt of about 28 yards for Stover, as Hobbs may need to be helped off the field. Yes, he will be. Have they gone this deep into a game, the Patriots, with only three points? They've been averaging 40 points a game. They've got three right now. They're behind. They may be down 10-3 at this point. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by Walt Disney Pictures' National Treasure Book of Secrets, opening December 21st in theaters everywhere. The seven-passenger Mazda CX-9, winner of the 2008 Motor Trend Sport Utility of the Year. IBM, when you're ready to stop talking innovation and start doing, visit IBM.com slash do. And Verizon Wireless, text MVP to 3400 for ESPN MVP, only from Verizon Wireless. Here in Baltimore, nine minutes left in the second. We'll have a field goal attempt coming from Matt Stover. Ellis Hobbs coming off the field under his own power. 29-yard attempt for Stover, who turns 40 in January. Ooh, just inside the would-be block, and the twisting wind able to bend it in for the man who picked for Belichick in Cleveland for five years. Then moved with the franchise here to Baltimore. The Ravens lead the Patriots by seven. What did you say? <laughs> they both won Super Bowls. One made his name on the defensive side of the ball. Five Super Bowls for Bill Belichick as an assistant and a head coach. Brian Billick winning the Super Bowl with the Ravens. And uh, his offense right now has some answers for the Patriots as Tom Brady's team has uh, gone three and out the last two drives and trailed 10-3. Stover kicks Welker to receive. Welker standing on the 15. So a line drive kick to keep it down under the wind is fielded by Heath Evans. And the running back brings it to the 39-yard line. One thing that has been a template for trying to get to the Patriots is get to Tom Brady. And the first couple of drives, he's been brought to the turf in Baltimore. No flurries at the back end of this cold front sweeping through Baltimore as Tom Brady, Randy Moss, and the Patriots look to get on track on offense. Three and out the last two possessions. Kevin Falk is the back. And carrying from the 40, squeezing through the hole, and brought down after a gain of eight. Sports in the 30 and 30 with Steve Lee. Mike, thank you. We begin with the hot stove not necessarily pertaining to Johan Santana. The Yanks still very interested, but they don't have to have him. Andy Pettit's agent says the lefty will return to pitch for the Yankees. He was to consider retirement. And relatives, friends, and teammates eulogize slain Redskin safety Sean Taylor in, Mi Taylor in Miami. About 3,000 people were in attendance. What's your after the game, Mike? Steve, thank you. Pass to Dante Stallworth is complete for a first down gain of 17. Samari Roll makes the tackle. Patriots going no huddle here. They limit the subs the Ravens can make on defense. But the Ravens have their nickel package on the field, so personnel-wise, they're all right. And Brady's throw complete to Stallworth out of bounds here at the 28. And clearly the Patriots are a great team. They're running right down the field right now. But Jaws, they're not the most popular team in the world. We were in Pittsburgh last weekend, sitting at the hotel bar. Every time Philadelphia scored, everybody in that place jumped up and cheered. People want to see them beaten. Yeah, and not everybody, but people love a great upset. And here's one in the making, perhaps. 
second and a couple, and here's the run with Falk for the first down, squeezing through there to the 21-yard line. Don't you find it interesting? People always wonder who runs the Patriots' offense and how much power does the play caller Josh McDaniels have? There's Belichick over on the sideline with the Patriots' defense. He's not even watching what's going on here in this series. Josh McDaniels has done a terrific job with the design and execution of this Patriots' offense. They're finding their rhythm now. They're mixing up the run with the pass, getting a little balance on the O side. If you won, Brady, pocket collapsing, but he moves up in it and throws for Moss. Landry hits him. It's Dewan Landry, the second-year man out of Georgia Tech, and it's incomplete. I mentioned Josh McDaniels, the 31-year-old offensive coordinator of this uh, Patriots team. Uh, from a coaching family out of Canton, Ohio, Nick Saban identified him, had him as a graduate assistant at Michigan State. He's worked on both sides of the ball under Charlie Weiss on the offensive side. And then after Charlie left, he assumed the offensive coordinator role here in New England. See a little sugar from the Ravens defense. The linebackers coming in and out. Second and ten. Brady's throw to Welker. Chased down by Corey Ivey. Three yards shy of the first down. Clean up by Ed Reed. Third down coming. You know, Mike, back to Josh McDaniels. I've been very impressed the number of times we've met with him talking the game of football. Yes, he's a young guy, but somewhere down the road, people are going to take a chance on a young guy with a great future. Josh McDaniels will be, will be, I will say this now, will be a head coach in the National Football League someday. He's that impressive for a guy 31 years old. He looks like my paper boy. Big down here. They only bring three. Eight covering for Moss. But he held it in time. I think he was juggling. Yes. Out of bounds. Incomplete. Marker down. Back near the uh, secondary on the opposite side of the throw. Holding number 35. Defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. As Corey Ivy, and again, it was away from the play, not on the play side, and will bring New England close to first and goal. And I really believe this is where the wind affected the ball. This is exactly going downwind. The ball sailed on Tom Brady just beyond, just a hair. Oh, and Randy Moss could not hold on. Good throw, but it did sail definitely down the field. The hold was Ivy on West Welker. It you is first and goal. We can't touch it down anymore. Brady Moss hit at the five. The fours make it. Ed Reed with the tackle. Second and goal coming up. So rare to see the Patriots take it almost 25 minutes into the game without scoring a touchdown. They've scored touchdowns almost at will this season. This is the second largest deficit they faced this year. Second only to the Colts' fourth quarter 10-point lead back on November 4th. Well, Tom Brady checking the play once again. He read the pressure coming from the Ravens' defense, and here it comes. And he throws after the hit. Easy flag on McAllister for pass interference. Defending Randy Moss. It'll be the seventh flag of the half for the Ravens. And first and goal for New England. Well, let's take a look at Randy Moss right there, number 81, coming back to the inside. <laughs> Clearly a hold. Pass interference, number 21, defense. The foul occurred in the end zone, first down. Looked like they were dancing. Come on, he was being held like that. That one was a hold. Yeah. But I will say this, Tom Brady took another hit from Corey, Corey Ivey on the blitz. Tom has been getting hit tonight. Mike Vrabel, Jr. Seau in the game as usual down at the goal line. Remember Vrabel, 10 catches in his career, 10 touchdowns, two of them in the Super Bowl. Brady throwing for Vrabel, an incomplete. Ed Reed had the coverage, and Brady wanted a flag, didn't get it. The Patriots have become a pass-happy team. You have to wonder about the mentality in these goal line and short rounder situations. Can they just take the rock, get a body on a body, and drive it into the end zone? When you're a linebacker and Ed Reed covers you, you know <laughs> you're a marked man. Second and goal. It is that's what, that's power Evans right. for the touchdown. The third rushing touchdown of the year for Evans. 
who was cut by the Dolphins in 2005 and the day he was cut was the day he was boarding up his house because Hurricane Wilma was coming. Picked up by the Patriots as a blocking back. He has uh, filled in a nice role this year at the goal line, and that's his third rushing touchdown of the season. Seems like a much smarter play than if you saw the pass play to Vrabel, throwing it at a linebacker 120 miles an hour <laughs> with no yeah. chance of catching that. Yeah, you're on the one-yard line. That's when you got to put the burden on the offensive yeah. line in the running game to punch it in. The Patriots did. Kostowski makes the extra point, and the Patriots answer the call. 60 yards, they walk down the field, aided by Raven Flags. Keith Evans, touchdown. All tied at 10 on this blustery night in Baltimore, where passing has been difficult, but New England came out with the no huddle, up the tempo, and goes nine plays and 60 yards. They'd only been held to 48 yards uh, on that uh, prior couple of possessions because of penalties brought back a little bit, but a nice drive there. Capped off by the Heath Evans touchdown. And now Gostowski kicks with the wind mostly at his back. The Amon figures brings it out from two yards deep. And the speedy rookie returner is brought down at the 22-yard line. Pierre Woods and Brandon Merriweather in there on the tackle. Extra whistles as the pushing and shoving continues. Now both sides go to their respective sideline and Bowler Brings the Ravens offense back out. Mike, this is a big drive for the Ravens offense right now. You have to maintain your intensity for 60 minutes when you play the New England Patriots. You can't have any lags. Right now, the Patriots scored. Let's see what the Ravens can do on this drive. It's very important for them. takes over from the 22. A nice job by the offensive line as Willis McGahey runs for five to the 27. Teddy Bruschi of this Patriots team made the tackle. The obvious question, we talked to Tom Brady last night. The obvious question is they ask about 16 and 0. And he always says we don't think about it, we don't talk about it, it's not the goal. I probably asked the question nine different ways in 15 minutes and finally he looks at me and sort of patiently says, we won 21 straight games at one point. We won three Super Bowls. We've had the last two minutes drives to win two of them. We're 11-0 now. What's the big deal? <laughs> it was great. Back to the game. He's going to gain only about two yards here. We'll have third and three coming up. He's the only guy that can say something like that. And everybody does make a big deal about the possibility of 16-0 and 19-0. and 0. But this is a team that has qualified as a dynasty already. Yeah. And they've had winning streaks. Yeah, and after Tom said that, we all kind of looked at each other and went, wow, he's really accomplished a lot. You know, we're talking about together 11-0. The guy has just been a phenomenal quarterback. You know, two late drives to win Super Bowls. Like 11-0. Yeah, yeah. Don't you get it? 11-0 is yeah, like, nothing. It's nothing. 21 straight already. <laughs> Musa Smith in it running back, third and three. Mason, the short motion man. Bowler looking that way, and it is caught by Mason, who was down incomplete. Incomplete from the far side. All the officials on the near side by the catch said yes. The headlinesman came across and said no. Here's a peek at it. Wow, he came from all the way across the field. Let's take a look at it. Definitely on the field. Yep. It's a great job, and he was the only one who had to look in because the bodies were in the way of the other officials. Yep. That ball's laying on the ground as Mason has his hand on the tip of the ball. So it will be three and out for Brian Billick's offense. And Sam Cook comes on to punt with Wes Welker back deep. Kind of chopped his steps there. Welker almost had that catch up on him quickly. A 40-yard kick. Nice job by Dan Wilcox, the backup tight end. Out there in coverage, makes the stop, and the Patriots will take over. It's their own 32. The kick was 39. The return was one. All across our family of networks, this has been Jimmy V. We got over the memory of the great Jim Valvano. The Jimmy V. Classic is the capper for it. Kansas State, Notre Dame, Michael Beasley's a great freshman for KSU. And O.J. Mayo at USC take on Derrick Rose in Memphis tomorrow night here on ESPN.
And all the uh, NFL officials, and for that matter, NBA officials as well, participating in the V Foundation's Blow the Whistle on Cancer campaign. The guys are donating a portion of their salary from this week's games to the V Foundation. And thank you not only to these men, but also the NFL and the NBA. Their leagues are matching the officials' personal donations. Sixth year this has happened. We thank you for keeping Jimmy V's memory and spirit alive. Kevin Falk, the first down run. This is where the last drive started. It goes out to the 37-yard line to pick up about four. Bill Belichick has a homecoming. He grew up near Baltimore in Annapolis and was, for his very first pro football job, a $25 a week special assistant on Ted Marchabrota's staff with the Baltimore Colts. So there it's Bill who uh, broke down the film, drove the coaches, worked tireless hours in a small closet at Memorial Stadium. And now returns here. Brady's pass incomplete. Terrell Suggs with the pressure. Michelle has more on the early years. Well, I got a chance to talk with Ted Marshall this week, Mike, and I asked him what it was like to interview Belichick back then, and he said, I was so impressed. He seemed like the kind of guy that would lock himself in a room and not leave until the job was done. And in fact, he said, that's the kind of guy he was. The reason it didn't last more than a year was because he couldn't survive on $25 a week. He asked for $4,000 and a car to commute from his mom's house, and Baltimore turned him down, Mike. He went to Detroit as an assistant. Brady's third down pass caught by Benjamin Watson. What a play to stand up, Watson, by Jermaine Winborn, denying New England the first down, and they are going to have to punt it away. What an open field play Mike, by Winborn. Often overlooked is tackling in the National Football League. Winborn does a terrific job. You'll see right here, Brady looking for the first down. Winborn closes, makes a tackle on a big old tight end, Benjamin Watson, that outweighs him by about 60 pounds. He brings it down short of the first down. A terrific stop by the Ravens defense. So Chris Hansen to punt again. Snap drifted back, slowed the timing of it. He gets it away. Figures should let it go. He picked it up on the bounce of the 10. Can he escape? Got one block, but not another. And he gets back most of the punt yards at the 12-yard line. Hansen at some point is going to... And Bowler has been outstanding under pressure. That's the key. The, the pocket is collapsing. You see him hang in there. Bodies flying around him, taking hits, escaping the rush, making plays. Look at this pressure right here. Hangs in the pocket, gets drilled by Adalis Thomas. That's playing quarterback in the National Football League. You're going to take hits. You've got to deliver the football accurately. And Bowler's been pretty good so far tonight. There his numbers. Now with 2.14 left, we'll see what he and the Ravens can do. Out of the gun, with pressure coming off the edge, it's a Musa Smith run. And the former Georgia Bulldog takes it just shy of the 20. Will take us to the two-minute warning. I didn't mean to step on Jaws. Oh, my toes. I was saying that the punter, <laughs> with three punts at this point, that's more work than he's had all year. He might have to sue for workman's comp at the end of this game. <laughs> We have Chris Berman back in the studio, Toyota Halftime Show. Fast just three minutes, recapping all the action from Week 13. And Tony and Michael Wilbon here in Baltimore have pardoned the interruption. After the Moose and Smith run before the two-minute warning, it is second and two. Ravens down to one timeout in this 10-10 game. Right back to a gun run with Smith. Trying to put his shoulder down, but Ty Warren was waiting there, along with Junior Seau and Teddy Bruce. A third down coming up. New England sitting on their full complement of timeouts. Will wait till after third down to take it. Not aid the Ravens if they get a drive going. Yeah, big down for the Ravens here. A third down and two. You do not want to give the Patriots the ball back with their three timeouts remaining and about a minute. This offense is far too explosive. And Bowler to Smith, who is met by Seau, and it'll be fourth down, timeout, New England. Junior Seau 
over 250 games, 38 years old, 18th year in the league, untouched, and comes up with the eraser. Well, Junior say out great anticipation and understanding of the play design. He just follows the fullback. The fullback leads him in the backfield to Musa Smith. This would be, I mean, obviously that was no offense at that point. But you can't emphasize enough at how much this game would mean to Baltimore. They've been the most disappointing team in the league. They've got a guy, Samari Roll, said, this is our Super Bowl. And if you knock off an undefeated team as the 85 Dolphins did to the 85 Bears, you live with them for years and years and years. It's a great, great win, but you can't get it by getting your back. Smash. They've had back to back three and outs. Sam Cook, very high punt. West Walker, fair catching. Great decision there. 46 yards. It's at the 36. Tony will see on PTI at the halftime. Yeah, I'm going to go prep Wilbon and tell him to watch the game. And in the third quarter, Don Shula will join us, the coach of the 17 0, 72 Dolphins, and the coach. 1985, 22 years ago yesterday, many of the great Dolphins from that undefeated team on the sideline watching the Dolphins hand the Chicago Bears what turned out to be their only loss of that season in a game watched by approximately 70 million people on Monday Night Football, 38-24, as Dan Marino and the Dolphins shredded the Bears. 70 million. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. Brady out of the gun, full complement of timeouts. With time, and throwing the deep ball for Moss in stride. Held up in the wind. Randy cannot get it. Ed Reed coming back on coverage. Mike, you're absolutely right. Randy Moss did get behind the secondary. Tom Brady just didn't have enough arm to get it there. You'll see Randy Moss match against McAllister. He settles, then he takes off. Ed Reed was a little bit flat, but the ball was a hair underthrown. Ed Reed able to knock it down. And that's all a win. Tom Brady can throw the ball 65 oh, yeah. yards. Oh, he can launch it yeah. now. <laughs> Moss only one catch, six yards tonight. After the deep shot, we'll see if it loosens up stuff underneath. Second and ten. Pressure again by the Ravens. An overload zone blitz. And Brady's throw for the middle. is deflected and intercepted by Ed Reed. A great return, man, with room to the left. Reed inside the 30. He lost the football. That's a live ball and a fumble. Ray Lewis at the bottom doesn't get it. The Patriots will get the ball back. And it's first down for New England. And Tom Brady's not happy. He's looking downfield, talking to the back judge. He believes one of his wide receivers or tight end was held on, on the play. Kevin Falk forces the fumble. First You'll the pick. Ed, Ed Reed right there. You'll see him. He makes the play right here. Now he settles in, drives the route. Good job by Ed Reed. Ball's tipped up in the air. He makes the play. Now, Ed Reed is a great return man. He's in the open field. He's thinking touchdown. Kevin Falk does a great job of stripping the football, yes. knocking it out of his hand. Not only was he going for the hit, he went for the, the strip, strip after yep. the hit. Corey Ivey had the good defense to deflect it. So after all that, it's first down, but now we might get a timeout here taken by the Ravens. It will be their last timeout, and it all comes with 41 seconds. And again, it's first and 10. Reed is bummed. Watch Falk after the hit go for the strip. Excellent job by Kevin Falk right here. The effort, the hustle, just strips the ball right from Ed Reed. And you see the Patriots. It looked like Benjamin Watson with the recovery. Falk on that play, not only did he make that sure, he got blocked, <laughs> ran all the way back to make the play. So if you're just tuning in, here's what's happened in this first half. Tom Brady's 8 of 17, or 8 of 18 now passing for 96 yards, and he has been pressured. The Ravens have gotten to Brady tonight, knocking him down a couple of times. Moss only 1 for 6, the wind affecting his ability to pull that one in. Kyle Bowler led a very nice drive, 51-yard completion on this drive that led to the Derek Mason touchdown. That made it 7 to 3. Matt Stover kicked a field goal after that to make it 10-3. The Patriots, on their last drive, went no huddle, nine plays, 60 yards. Heath Evans scored a touchdown to tie it at 10. And here we are with 41 seconds left. And Lawrence Maroney carrying to the right to the 33-yard line. We talked about the penalties, the mistakes at a bad time for the Ravens. If you're in a situation where you're trying to pull an upset of an undefeated team, and they are as big an up up underdog as we've seen on a Monday night at home in the 38-year history of Monday Night Football, 
you got to hold on to the ball in those situations. You have to play yeah. mistake-free, Mike. And uh, the Ravens, although it's 10-10, to 10, they haven't played mistake-free. But right now, it appears the Patriots are happy to go into halftime with this baby tied up 10-10. With two timeouts, happy to get in, as you said, at that number. Wow. So we're going to halftime show with Chris Berman. Here in Baltimore at the half with pushing and shoving from players after the play. We got a game all tied at 10. They're off to the locker room. All's clean. And we go to Chris. Perfect was very important and very significant to us because, you know, when it was accomplished, we were the only team that, that had ever done it. And year after year, teams would go 10 and 0, 11 and 0, 12 and 0. And you'd think that they would have an opportunity to go and run the table and have the perfect season. But somewhere along the line, you know, they discovered how tough it was to do that. New England this year is, is a team that looks like they really are capable of, of running the table. They're outstanding in every phase of the game. So I think that this team really has a shot to, to go the entire way. And if they do, that's going to be 19-0. And, and, you know, 19-0 and 0 is better than 17-0. And, and we're going to be the first to congratulate them if they do. Interesting comments from the Hall of Fame coach, Don Shula. Most wins all time. He will join us in the booth here in the third quarter of a game that has taken on more drama and intrigue, perhaps, than most people thought. All tied at 10. Tom Brady, Teddy Bruschi, and the undefeated Patriots against the 4-7 and seven losers of five consecutive game, Baltimore Ravens. That was very statesmanlike from Don Shula. I would ask him when he got in the booth. That's nonsense, right? You want him to lose, don't you? You want him to lose? Of course you want him to lose. Well, we'll let him answer that. Ravens will get the ball to start the third. Steven Gostowski with the kickoff. Again, the wind is toughest in this direction. Yaman figures chased it down at the 10, hemmed in and brought down at the 27. Let's check what's going on at halftime. Susie Colbert. Well, Mike, Brian Billick was visibly frustrated a couple times during the first half. And when I asked him about that at halftime, he really did snap. And he said, my team is 4-7. and seven. We're holding our own against the best team in the NFL. You think I'm frustrated? Well, Coach, actually, yeah, a couple times. And then he admitted that, yeah, there were some missed opportunities and penalties. But the key here is he told us his plan was to pound the ball for 60 minutes. Even though they were quite balanced, he says, we're going to keep on running it. And, of course, the wind is going to dictate a lot. 19 runs, a dozen passes in that first half. The second half begins with a Willis McGahee run. Looking shifty and uh, quick from his old days. And with power, Herring Patriots past the first down marker at the 38 yard line. So here are the numbers from the first half. And these numbers look like the first two drives for the Patriots on a week in, week out basis. Limited to 125 yards. Each team has turned it over. No third down conversions. Yeah, for the that, that's the key right there. 0 for 4 on third down conversions. Conversions. That means the Patriots are not staying on the field, and that's a positive for the Ravens. Those explosive players are sitting on the bench. <laughs> it's like shot to the system. The Ravens outgained the Patriots in a half. Go figure. McGahee, another power run. Rodney Harrison has to bring him down, but that is a gain of eight to the 46-yard line. What we're seeing from Willis McGahee is very patient runner. You'll see him right here. Outstanding jump block by LaRon McLean inside. But the vision of McGee. Now, a four-yard gain in a game like this is very important. And I like this. The short, choppy steps. This is patience to the hole. And then he accelerates through the hole. That's what the great running backs do. And he is now finishing. When the pads are down, you're going forward. That's another yard or two on every carry. Keeps the offense on schedule. We replaced Jamal Lewis here in Baltimore. Lewis moved to Cleveland. Much more of a pounding back, but McGee showing that he still has that power to do it. He's picked up another first down here at the 48-yard line and comes out of the pile limping a bit. I'm going to keep selling, George. You'd want me to do that to sell the game. So keep right? selling. You look at the Ravens, 13-3 and three last year, 4-7 and seven this year, losing five in a row. Every indicator is down. Their offense is down. Their defense is way down. Their sacks are way down. They're having a terrible year, and they're having Hanging in, depleted as they are through injuries, with maybe the best team ever, which is what we said two hours ago. It's a pretty good night so far for them. So far, so good. I would agree with you, Tony. 
Musa Smith replaces McGahey. Bowler, a first down throw, turns into a run, gets past the line of scrimmage. Richard Seymour chases him down at the 48 yard line, pick up of about four yards on the play. It was one of the first opportunities where the Ravens were taking a shot down the field. It wasn't there. Bowler was very judicious with the football, didn't force it, gained four yards, keep the offense on schedule again. The quarterback numbers here for tonight, and the throwing numbers come with an asterisk. If you're just tuning in, you saw the score tied, you switched over to the game. It is very windy. Wind sustained over 20 miles an hour. Throwing has been difficult. It's a swirling wind, so throwing in all directions has been a problem. But not running, not from a game. First down inside the 40-yard line. And that's all true. But what are the odds that you would look at the numbers for Bowler and Brady and they'd be the same? Right? That's just, that, that wouldn't happen all year. You know, what I'm loving about this Ravens running game right now, it is an attitude running game, man and a man. Let me give some props to the guys up front. Jonathan Ogden, Jason Brown, Mike Flynn, Ben Grubbs, Marshall Yonda. Sometimes we don't recognize those guys, the road graders up front. McGahee, four carries on this drive, 430 yards. Willis takes the run for about oh, a yard or so, and if it's two yards, he'll get to the 1,000 mark for the season. Three other backs have 1,000 yards in the NFL this year. You know, you have these linebackers, and without Roosevelt Colvin, there are more snaps for Junior Seau and Teddy Bruschi, Mike Vrabel, all uh, 11th year or more. Bruschi, his 12th season. Seau is 18th. And Brian Bill talked about, hey, if we can pound the ball and keep these linebackers on the field and keep putting a physical pressure and a physical toll on the Patriots, maybe that's part of the game plan that can work against them. Seven runs, no passes this drive. Here's a pass. Bowler was hit as he threw. It was caught by Mason to the 17-yard line. Bowler's shaken up. Drags himself off the turf after the Vince Wolfork hit. Big game by Bowler. Well, I hate to sound repetitive, but Kyle Bowler is hanging in the pocket, looking down the gun barrel. He's attacking Asante Samuel with Derek Mason. Asante Samuel, one of the premier corners in the league. Bowler looks to his left, comes back to the right, doesn't tip where he's throwing the football. He's playing like a wily old veteran tonight, Michael. And he took a shot, too, and he was limping when he got up. The backup quarterback is Troy Smith, the reigning Heisman Trophy winner from Ohio State. Rookie hasn't taken a snap in the league. If you're just joining us, Steve McNair put on injured reserve earlier today. McGahee, 10. McGahee, 5. Willis McGahee, oh! touchdown, Baltimore! <laughs> that I took all week say the same thing. They say the Ravens are dissolving. It's a terrible season for the Ravens. They have no chance. My colleague to my right, Mr. Jaworski, gave him a 1% chance him tonight. I gave him two. I told that. Oh, now with the two. slow going and the wind blowing, they're in it. They're up. And I didn't think they would run the ball consistently. I was wrong. Jonathan Ogden threw a great block on Jarvis Green. And we mentioned the Sean Taylor funeral today. The passion of the Miami Hurricane to his teammates, including McGahee, into the end zone. Baltimore, back on top. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by GMC, official vehicle of the NFL and proud supporter of those who want it more. Dr. Pepper, with 23 flavors at every Dr. Pepper, there's more to it. NFL.com, have you voted for the 2008 Pro Bowl teams? Time's running out, only at NFL.com slash Pro Bowl. And DOP, it's amazing. It's the mirrors. On this cold snow flurry in the air, blustery night, feels like it's about 15 with the wind chill. There's something else in the air. The Ravens pounded it right down the throat of the Patriots. Eight plays, 73 yards, mostly McGahee on the ground. One pass to Mason, 17-10 game. Kickoff return, Ellis Hobbs from the six. Took one back against the Jets, 108 yards. Tripped up, marked down at the 28-yard line. The tackle by Antoine Barnes. Belichick's team has watched Willis McGahee walk down the field. Now their response.
bring them all in and figure out what's going on. Bill Belichick in the middle of his New England defense as Baltimore walks it down the field. What offensive answers come up here? Every patch drive has started inside their own 40. This is the first drive in the third. Lawrence Maroney. Two yards. Jaws before we go forward. Show us the how and why of the touchdown by Baltimore. Well, there's no question the fullback got a great block. That was uh, Laron did a terrific job. Laron McLean, excuse me, did a terrific job sealing. Now Jonathan Ogden does an outstanding job on Jarvis Green. That created the alley for Willis McGade to get big runs. You also need great blocking downfield. Wide receiver Mark Clayton, an outstanding job. After a gain of two, it's second and eight. Randy Moss one catch. Wes Welker three catches. Brady's completed eight balls in the first half. Just a four-man rush. The pump. Being pursued, Brady throws to Maroney, who lost Ray Lewis. Into the secondary, Maroney accelerating to the 35-yard line. What a play by Brady with motion to keep it alive. The gain is 35. One thing about Tom Brady, when there's pressure, he will avoid it. He steps up, no panic, moves his right, stays on balance, then finds Maroney, takes the hit, but the whole time the eyes were downfield looking for a receiver to uncover, and the Patriots go right to their no-huddle offense. The game by Maroney is 36. Longest reception of the season. Now he runs for four to the 30, and here's Michelle Zafoy. Well, I spoke with Bill Belichick at halftime, Mike, and I talked to him about the pressure that the Ravens were able to put on Tom Brady in the first half. He said, there's no magic to it. We just have to block better. His bigger concern was the way his offense performed on re in the red zone and on third down. As you guys mentioned, 0 for 4 on third down. Kyle Brady in a tight end. Three receivers, one back. Maroney carries. 27-yard line. Dewan Landry came in the back end of that. Dewan Edwards made the tackle. It was very uh, atypical of this record-setting New England season. Their possessions through the first half. Poor field position, not sustaining drives, and three punts after 24 punts in the first 22 halves of the season. And they normally average about 10 possessions a game. They had a lot of possessions in that first half. Third and two, Maroney. Can he get second effort? No! Stop! Haloti Nada is having an incredible game on the inside. At six foot four, 340 pounds, he has been unblockable inside. Jaws, I think they go for it here. Field goal from here is 42 yards. Belichick is always a fourth and one. Go for a guy like his mentor Parcells. Ray Lewis came up in that hole and jammed it. Fourth in the yard. Kevin Falk has the first down at the 22-yard line. Dewan Landry came up from the safety spot too late. Pats keep the drive alive as they convert a fourth down for the 11th time in 16 tries this year. Kevin Falk, probably the most underrated offensive player for the Patriots. He does all the dirty work. Catches the short pass out of the backfield, the screen pass, and he will block there. A big fourth down conversion to first down by Kevin Falk. First and 10 from 23. Brady. To Brady. Kyle's gain is six. Sports into 30 and 30. Here's Steve Levy. Mike, thank you. College football news for you. UCLA football coach Carl Durrell fired today, just two days after losing to USC in the game that decided the Pac-10 berth for the Rose Bowl. He was 35 and 27 in five years. And relatives, friends, and teammates paid their respects today to Redskin safety Sean Taylor in Miami. Stay current with ESPN News Sports Center after the game, Mike. Thank you, Leaves. Second and four. Running left, ducked away from the Bart Scott tackle, gets a first down. First and ten for the Patriots as they try to respond to Baltimore's opening drive of the half, Tony, which was a touchdown. Yeah, not to be too syrupy, but don't you think there's something admirable, Jaws and Mike, about the way they're going down the field now? This is the second week in a row they've had very, very tough games. You get the sense they may have two or three more very, very tough games. If you're going to be a champion, you have to play just like this. There's a reason they're undefeated. That's right. First and ten, it is Falk again. 
eludes the Kelly Gregg tackle. He's going to be stopped just inside the nine-yard line. They're doing a lot of this on the ground, and again, the passing game has been truncated, if you will, shortened up. You can't pass it deep because of the wind here tonight. Oh, truncated? Yes, Ron. Wow. And they are running as Falk hobbles off and Maroney comes back. They're running on a team that allows under three yards per rush. This is a very tough team to run on, even though they've given up more points and yards than in past years. Second and seven, Moss at the bottom. Welker in motion. Brady to Randy. Inbounds, yard shy of the first down. We'll have third in the yard coming up. Working on Chris McAllister. You'll see Chris just giving him a little bit too much room. He had that inside alignment because he did not have help to the inside. They went man-to-man -man coverage. Brady read the coverage. Just got enough room to squeeze it into Randy Moss. The Patriots try to go quick with a snap, and Baltimore beats them to it with a timeout call. So the Pats try to get Baltimore while they were substituting personnel. Ravens timeout. Third and one for the four after this. Out of the Raven call timeout, we have third and one for the first down, three for the touchdown for New England. Patriots opening drive, third quarter. That's three wide, one tight end, and Maroney seven yards deep. This might be that Randy Moss throw. Brady looking for Moss. Touchdown, Patriots. Tom Brady's 40th touchdown pass of the season. Moss's 17th touchdown reception. An extra point from a tie game. Excellent job by Tom Brady recognizing the blitz. He changed the call in the protection at the line of scrimmage. Knew he had Randy Moss singled up against Chris McAllister. Easy touchdown. Randy Moss wins to the inside. So Peyton Manning, Marino twice, Kurt Warner, and now Tom Brady. The only four men who have 40 touchdowns in a season. The extra point added by Steven Gostowski. All tied at 17. The team that went 17-0, the Miami Dolphins. Don Shula, their coach, joins us after this. So the drive for New England to tie the game. 11 plays and 72 yards. And the three-yard score for Moss. Brady completing all four passes on the drive. So two drives here in the quarter and two touchdowns. And we're right back where we were at the half, all tied. Randy Moss catches his 17th touchdown for the third time, 17 in a season, third time in his career. Yaman figures the return from the eight. Nice job by Figures, who has great speed and rockets past Harrison. And the picker, Gostowski, brings him down along with Larry Izzo at the 44-yard line. Good field position. Well, New England trying to be undefeated. The only team to go start to finish without a loss, the Miami Dolphins. 17-0. Bob Greasy coming back in the championship game after Earl Morrow stepped in for injury. You know the names, you know the faces, and you know the results. Wins. 17 of them. And the coach, the man who's won more games than any coach in the National Football League's history, Don Shula, joins us here in Baltimore and uh, getting the opportunity to see quite a game. We'll hear from the coach after this first and ten. With Willis McGahee. Bowler got in the way, and McGahee's on his way. Past the 40 into the 39-yard line. A first down and a run of 16 as the pushing goes on behind the play. And uh, Coach Shula, first off, welcome. Second off, picked a good night to come to a game. <laughs> yeah. Great to be back in Baltimore. A lot, of good, a lot of great memories back here. I would be crazy if I didn't take this opportunity to say, Aren't you rooting for Baltimore to win <laughs> now, this one? How would you know that? <laughs> <laughs> I've been accused of doing those kind of things. <laughs> Isn't the champagne on ice somewhere? Well, I don't know about that, but uh, I'll tell you, the, the Patriots are so good, and the Brady's unbelievable, but every team that they play now is going to be like the Ravens here tonight. It's going to be a big game for them. You know, it makes their season if they can pull the upset. And Coach Willis McGahee, who went to college down in Miami, is having an inspired game. 124 rushing yards, over 1,000. And that play out of the backfield for a first down to the 27-yard line. 
Right, the quarterback, Kyle Bowler, is doing a, a great job. And, uh, you know, that defense has always been a good defense. You wondered if they could score offensively, and they've been moving the ball. Coach, you mentioned Kyle Bowler. Another design play a moment ago to get it deep. No panic. Didn't force the ball. Checked it down to Willis McGahee. Moved the chains. Move from the 27 with Derek Mason as the move man. The pressure comes from Seau. McGahee runs the other, or rather, Musa Smith runs the other way to the 19-yard line, a gain of about eight and a half. I'm sure you were expecting this question a couple of months ago. There was a story in which you talked about the possibility of an asterisk being attached. Oh, wait a minute. Now. <laughs> Come on, now, to, to New England, and then you said you changed your mind. Now, now we're we're two months down the road. I don't remember anything about an asterisk. <laughs> what do you think of the? What's your position on the Patriots? <laughs> I think that they're unbelievable, and if they run the table, they should be given credit for running the table. This is a, a great football team. I'm very proud of our team in 72 and our accomplishments, but if somebody does it better than we did it, I'm going to call that coach and our players are going to call their coach. Their player. In the 18, Musa Smith dancing, giving McGahee a break and Ron, they continue to pound the running game at the Patriots. First down. Well, this is much like Coach Shula's 72 Dolphins. They were not a passing team. They got a body and a body, and they just established a line of scrimmage, moved the defense to the other line of scrimmage, and ran the ball down people's throats. And I am shocked the Ravens are dominating the line of scrimmage like they are this evening. Of course you are. I think you in one game we threw it yeah. nine times. Not, yeah, the Super Bowl you <laughs> <laughs> Look at the rushing yards allowed by the Patriots here tonight. Again here Ooh. with a step to the five put by Ellis Hall. They are staying after it. They are staying after it. You were did you watch the first half with the Ravens owner Steve Bashotti? Yes. What were did. his spirits like? Yeah, he was <laughs> very, very happy about everything. And uh, you know, this crowd here tonight is fantastic. I remember the old stadium here. You know, I was here for four years as a player, seven years as a head coach, and uh, a lot of great memories in Baltimore. But this stadium is beautiful, and the crowd reminds me of the kind of support that we had when I was coaching here. Second down from the five. Look at McGahee's numbers, 132 yards. They're back to him, and McGahee, right at the first down marker, has got a first down at the two-yard line. It'll be first and goal as this third quarter comes to an end. This is not a complicated scheme, Coach. They are just getting a man on a man, attitude running, and you watch Willis McGay. He's running like the greatest running back in the history of the game, and not only the best back that he's talking about himself the past couple seasons. They're going to measure here for the first down. If they have the first down, the Ravens will go to the other end to start the fourth quarter. But you need to measure on this end first. And you get a feeling this crowd will explode when the Ravens trot down to the other end of the field. Each team one full possession in the third quarter. Each team one touchdown. The Ravens two yards away from retaking the lead. Haven't seen an underdog at home on a Monday night this big. But tonight, the Ravens have answered the call. And their fans send them with cheers down to the other end. We'll let you listen to them as off we go to the fourth quarter on Monday Night Football. So off we go to the fourth quarter here in Baltimore, all tied at 17. The New England Patriots 11-0 since the Dolphins' perfect regular season and then three playoff wins that 17-0 season. Six teams have won their first 11 games, the last, the 05 Colts. The Patriots on the ropes a bit here. Fourth quarter starts with a McGahee run. Trying to bounce off the would-be tackle by Bruschi and Teddy helped stop him and wait for reinforcements. It'll be second down and goal. Willis McGahee's numbers of note tonight. McGahee has the most rushing yards against the Patriots defense since Willis McGahee in 2005 when he was a Buffalo Bill. The key there is he averaged 5.4 yards per touch. That is sustaining offense. Second and goal, the flips comes, it's picked up. Bowler throws, touchdown. Dan Wilcox, Ravens lead. I got 
Don Shula pounded me on my shoulder <laughs> after that touchdown. I you can't control myself. You don't think he's anxious on this champagne? Come on. <laughs> well, Coach, you said it. Kyle Bowler has played a very good game. He really game. has. I, 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 I didn't know a lot about Bowler. But watching him tonight, the way he's uh, taking control of the game, a lot of poise. The play calling, I think, has been great. And the Ravens on top by seven. No they have not sat down here in Baltimore since the touchdown. We've had three drives here in this half, three touchdowns. And now Tom Brady's team will get another chance against Ray Lewis and the Ravens defense. Mike, I don't think they've sat down since the opening kickoff. You're right. Bro. They have been into the game. This is the direction where the kickoffs have been short because of the wind. So Ellis Hobbs is up to 10 for the Stover kick. Pretty good job. You got a lot of hang time and the most depth on a kick going that way tonight. Hobbs from the three. Nice sidestep to get a little bit of an opening and brought down at the 30-yard line. Jermaine Winborn, the first man to hit. 26 in the return. Here's the touchdown. An outstanding job first by LaRon McLean right there. And then you'll see the release from Daniel Wilcox coming to the back of the end zone. Gutsy call. But all of a sudden, there you get the block. It was Willis McGahee. Now you get the throw. Yeah, outstanding throw. McGahee on Warren with a great block. You'll see it right there. Goes to the knees, chops him down. That gives the vision for Kyle Bowler to deliver the football to Daniel Wilcox. And a dayless Thomas was this close to get to his yes. old teammate and maybe a turnover. Maroney on a first down run. Runs to the right. Gained about four. We have Don Shula, of course, with us here in the booth, the Hall of Fame coach. Coach, you, I guess when you show up on a Monday night and the team is undefeated in December, we showed everybody a, f a few moments ago, 22 years ago yesterday, your uh, Dolphin team beating the 85 Bears, their only loss in Miami. That was probably the best first half of football I've ever been around as a coach. Oh. I mean, we dominated that first half and did everything right, and uh, we knew how to beat the uh, the Bear Blitz and uh, scored, I think, 30-some points in the first half of that game. It is Buddy Ryan's son, Rex Ryan, cooking up the defense for this Ravens team against Brady. Stop. And the pressure gets to Tom. Halote Nata comes up with the sack. Dog, since you've been in this position of going 14 and 0 and then 17 and 0, at what point in the season does the pressure get tangible that you feel it about going undefeated? Might the Patriots feel it yet? Well, our, our whole uh, objective was not to go undefeated. We wanted to get to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl because we had been to the Super Bowl the year before and got beat. So you don't want to be that team that gets to the Super Bowl and gets beat. If you lose a game along the way, it doesn't matter as long as you get there and win the Super Bowl. Third and 12. Three-man rush gets to Brady. Broke down. Some strange things happening here tonight. Antoine Barnes, a rookie at a Florida International, his first National Football League sack. They get Antoine Barnes very quick off the edge against Matt Light. He gets that high shoulder of Matt Light. You'll see it right here. The, the shoulder is up. He's able to get under that shoulder and get the pressure on Tom Brady. That's taking advantage of speed and quickness and maybe a little bit of a flaw in Matt Light's game to get that left shoulder up in the air. All of a sudden, you got Barnes coming right underneath. Somebody had to make up for the pass rush for the missing Trevor Price. Barnes takes advantage of his opportunity. The punt was 46. Yaman figures from the 34. Still alive. Figures down the sideline. Cuts inside the punter. Yaman figures at the 30. There's a penalty marker down at the spot of the kick. Could be illegal man downfield, and thus the return would stand. An eligible player downfield, number 58 of the kicking team. That five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. We got Mike Pereira, director of officiating here. Mike Tarico. <laughs> I like what he's saying. I like what he's saying. They're never going to let Don Shula leave Baltimore again. <laughs> You're here for life. <laughs> and, I, and I like crab cakes, too. <laughs>
Men's Warehouse. You're going to like the way you look. Visit TMW.com for the store nearest you. And Capital One. What's in your wallet? Some of the images of this night in Baltimore that might be long remembered by Ravens fans. Of course, this franchise won a Super Bowl, Super Bowl 35. Don Shula was part of many of the great Baltimore football moments with the Colts. Bill Belichick and Tom Brady's team in a bit of trouble. Down seven, Baltimore ball at the plus 26. McGahee gets back to the line of scrimmage. No game. Ron, take us back to the last drive. Well, they're staying with the blueprint, and that is pound the football. Great patience here by Willis McGahee. The point of attack is blocked, and oh my goodness, Kyle Bowler with a block. Kyle Bowler playing very well. Wanted a big play down the field. Wasn't there. Check it down to McGahee. And you got to have courage in the red zone. Here Kyle Bowler sticks it into Daniel Wilcox. Outstanding execution by the Ravens on the running game and the passing game during that drive to put him ahead. After no game, second and ten. Field goals are tough for anybody with this win. McGahee tries to spin. Richard Seymour had a four on there. McGahee kept the play alive and gains only a yard as Rodney Harrison makes the tackle. Third down conversion sometimes can be misleading because you don't know if it's third and short, third and long. One thing we know, you must make third down to sustain drives that the Patriots have been great at all year. They haven't been tonight, Ron. That's an amazing number right there. You just don't see that from the New England Patriots. Wes Welker, we talk about him, the slot machine on third down when Brady throws to him. 64% conversion from third to first down. The Ravens doing a good job of jamming Wes Welker the line and not getting him a free release into his route. From here, a field goal would be 43 yards right at the edge of Stover's range with the wind and a penalty marker down is going to push him back where the fault starts. Flag eight on Baltimore. Ball start, number 83, offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. There has been so much. There was a shot before of Brian Billick. Again, 13-3 and three last year, 4-7 and seven this year, and criticism from his defensive players. And he's... He's not on a hot seat, but he's under the gun to some degree. I mean, people talking about him, wondering as an offensive coordinator if he does the right job. You can almost see in his face how badly he wants this clock to go and just go and get this one. Can you blame him? He's like Coach Shula. <laughs> Third and 14. Bowler to take a shot at the end zone for Darling. It's intercepted. Intercepted by the Patriots. And James Sanders brings it across the 40-yard line. So Bowler turns it over and gives New England a great opportunity. The Patriots back on the field with a chance to tie after the James Sanders interception. Since Don Shula's Dolphins went undefeated, six teams have started 11-0. Look at the teams they lost to. Middle of the road teams, both dynamic teams. The Ravens coming in tonight, four and seven, but just a crucial mistake on the turnover, and you don't give the most potent offense in the NFL good field position and a great opportunity. Brady pass deflected, intended for Wes Welker. Penalty marker down from the secondary with some sort of contact in the back end. Now they want to point out, oh, it's going to be on the Patriots here. This is going to be a flag on New England. Pass interference, number 88. Offense, 10-yard penalty. It's still first down. That's on Kyle Brady. Let's go back to the interception, Ron. Huh? Well, Kyle Bowler, you know, I mean, you've got to see the throw. He doesn't see the throw. He's got time. He throws the ball down the middle. There's nothing there but white jerseys. If you don't see the throw, don't make the throw. Rodney Harris in front of Coach Billick. Oh, oh, kiss him, uh, kiss him. Oh, Don Shula, did you ever do that? No, I, I can't oh, remember hey. ever doing hey. anything like that. Uh, I, was, I played for Ron for two years. I stood next to the sideline. You can he vouch for it. no kisses. <laughs> uh, Great hey. shot, guys. Oh. <laughs> First and 20, Brady to Maroney down the sideline. Got a block downfield from Stallworth, and there goes Maroney. Got another block from Welker, all the way to the 25-yard line. A 42-yard game. Excellent job by Tom Brady. Once again, the clarity of which Tom Brady sees the field. He looked downfield, didn't have anything. He realized the Ravens had blown a coverage out into Brady's left flat, off the play action. Maroney leaks out after Bart Scott turned his back. Tom Maroney, big play Patriots. And New England goes no huddle. Ed Reed was hobbling after that play. 
Brady hands it off to Maroney this time. He gets to the 20-yard line. Cliff Shula back to that interception a moment ago by Baltimore. You, you mentioned right away as we went to break, remind you of the Philadelphia game last exactly. week. Exactly. Philadelphia was playing a great football game, and then late in the game, they got greedy. They threw it up there. It was an easy pick for the defense. The same thing here. I mean, they had uh, patience to move the ball down the field. They got to come out of there with at least three points for that field position they had. Second down here from the 20. The snap takes us to the nine-minute mark. Gets the four-man rush. Brady, a laser. Moss couldn't bring it in. Chris McAllister there on coverage. That's clearly a catch. Randy Moss must come up with. Tom Brady could not throw the football any better. He alerted Randy Moss. If we got the man coverage, I was coming to you. And you'll see this throw right here. Randy Moss with McAllister playing outside. Has the post route. Look at this throw. Right on the hands. Randy's got to come up with that catch. This is third down. And six. Barnes slipped through the double team. Brady's pass for Kyle Brady incomplete. No flag. Fourth down, field goal attempt. Gostowski coming off. Well, the one thing the Wave is doing a terrific job of that stick and stay, that Velcro, plastering the receivers as Brady moves. A lot of times the receiver will uncover, Coach. But I tell you what, they're giving small windows to throw into. He wanted Welker there a big time, but they did a great job of jamming Welker to line, and he never had anything to throw to. He came off to the secondary receiver. Important clutch kick for Gostowski from 38. And it goes through. So Gostowski with a pressure field goal in the win. 24-20. 8.41 to go in Baltimore. Eight forty-one left. Don Shula here in the booth with us. Uh, you mentioned coming back to Baltimore. This is a great Baltimore football night. But uh, your days with the Colts as a player and a coach, Bill Belichick started here, and he was with the Baltimore Colts. It's a pretty exciting, exciting time in this city once again. It really is. And uh, I remember Bill when he uh, when he grew up with Teddy Marchibroda was the head coach, and Bill would be around the office doing things for Ted Marchibroda. That's right. That's how he got his start. Yolan figures tripped up at the 27-yard line. Bill was telling us those stories. $25 a week. You're worth every penny of it. Bill told us he made $22.81 after taxes. He remembers. Never forget. Another Hall of Fame coach like Coach Shula. Be right back here in Baltimore. Remember, 11-0 New England on their way here. They trailed by 10, right around the 10-minute mark against Indianapolis and came back on the road for a victory. Here they were down seven, came back for the field goal, and now the pressure goes on the Raven offense to sustain a drive with eight and a half left. And a four-point lead. Willis McGahee for the 28th time carries. Only for a couple of yards to the 30. Coach Shula, before we leave you, we leave you with memories of Don Shula. Oh, Baltimore no. Day. <laughs> Playing for uh, four years here before becoming the head coach. 1963 at age 33. 21 interceptions before the wow. coaching career. Seven years, that's right. 21 picks. A lot of people don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> and they said you were slow at the time. You look pretty good. Well, no, no, I was, um, I could run. <laughs> Second and eight here at the 30. Uh, good pressure by Rodney Harris and the trip McGahee in the backfield. A loss of five yards. Coach, what do you think the key is now here for New England? Because you had many close calls in your perfect season with the Dolphins. Well, the thing that uh, the Ravens have to do is somehow figure out how to make a first down and, and run some clock. And and for, for the... Uh, Patriots. Patriots, you know, they're going to put eight people up there. You just saw a great example of that now. Rodney Harrison making a tackle on the line of scrimmage. And so you, you got to be able, you got to have the confidence to throw the football in a situation like this. It's third and nine, halfway through the quarter. And they will throw. And Bowler does throw. It's incomplete. Intended for Mark Clayton. The coverage was good. And those leaders like Harrison making back to back plays to force fourth down. 
kind of like your group, Coach. It's so many veterans at the big time. Those guys come up with those plays. Yeah, we had uh, Jake Scott and Dick Anderson, probably the best pair of safeties yeah. that I've ever been around. And uh, you can always count on them to make big plays in, in key situations. And Harrison, the 14th year man, comes up with that big play. Sam Cook, with this wind, has been able to get him up high and turn the ball over. And watch if he gets good hang time on this kick. Does not. Fair catch signal for him made just a 29 yard kick. Falk takes it to 43. Coach Shula, it was uh, an honor to have you up here on this Thank very you. special night. We'll let you enjoy the rest of the game, but thanks. Great to see Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Good to be with you. Thank you very much. Great seeing you, Coach. Next Thank time, you. bring all the menu from Shula's Steakhouse. <laughs> <laughs> the thing, okay? Yeah, we got to do that. <laughs> <laughs> He's not getting a free steak out of that. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on Nutrisystem now. Oh, oh, oh. I'll take plug. your steak. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Coach Shula. It was great to have you up here. Great seeing you. So now the opportunity for the New England Patriots from their 44. Plenty of time with 7.09 left. Trailing by four. Brady fires a rocket into the waiting arms of Randy Moss at the 37-yard line. The pickup 19, first down, and New England getting into a rhythm. This is when Tom Brady is at his very best with the game on the line. Let me give you a quote from Bill Belichick a year ago about Tom Brady. He knows how to get a game won. There's no quarterback I'd rather have with a few minutes to go in the fourth quarter, whether we're ahead or behind. He's behind, and there's a few minutes to go. Maroney, a much bigger running factor here tonight. Gets it to the 30-yard line, a couple of yards shy of the first down. Kelly Gregg made the tackle. Maroney was averaging under 10 carries per game. He has 13 carries tonight for 44 yards, plus a couple of big receptions as well. Two for 79 yards. No huddle and out of the gun. Maroney, Pelote Nata was waiting. A penalty marker down after the first down, but Ray Lewis thinks it's a hold. Holding number 67, offense. 10 yard penalty, it's still second down. Center, Dan Copeland. Number 97, Kelly Gregg, just came up off the ground, signaling to the referee that he was held. The flag came in. This is the guy you want. Again, Tom Brady, as he said the other day, what's, what's the big deal about 11-0? We've won three Super Bowls, and two of them, with two minutes to go, we had to come back and win. Right, Jaws? He he's, is Mr. He's cool. the one you he, want. He is the best in this position. You know, we're here in Baltimore where John Unitas was recognized as one of the best quarterbacks running the two-minute offense. Well, Tom Brady falls in that same category. Three receivers and tight end Ben Watson. From the 41, Brady, the pump didn't get rid of the defense on Watson. Now he just gets rid of it out of the tackle box with Watson standing nearby. A penalty marker is thrown by the umpire. Let's see what his call will be. An eligible receiver downfield. So. An eligible downfield, number 77, offense. That's a five-yard penalty. It's still second down. Excellent discipline, Mike, by the Ravens' defense. It was a screen pass. Tom Brady pumped left. No one was fooled on the Ravens' defense. Excellent job of recognition. You'll see it here. Tom Brady comes back. He pumps to the left. He's setting up the screen to the right. It's not there. You see a lot of Raven jerseys in the middle of that pile. Tom Brady just checks it down. Incomplete. And you saw the offensive lineman. Will they decline this penalty, by the way? Correction. Baltimore has elected yes. to decline Absolutely. the penalty for Absolutely. an eligible downfield. Absolutely. It will be third down at the previous spot. We go back to Brady and his success, as Tony was alluding to, his game-winning drives, fourth quarter or overtime, most since 2001. That becomes significant because September 2301 was when he stepped into the lineup for Drew Bledsoe. By declining that penalty, you still leave third and long. They've been great third and long. It's at the 41-yard line. Yeah, very interesting choice because it could have been second and 22. You like to go third down and thir third down and 12 or about 13. Second and 19. 19, I'm sorry, five yard penalty. Yeah. Instead, third and 14. Brady, the late pressure comes, and the pass is incomplete. 
so often everything Rex Ryan does looks different. It never looks the same, and that time delayed pressure gets to Brady, and they're forced to punt. That is his philosophy, Rex Ryan. It is always about changing the look. Even a wily veteran like Tom Brady, who's seen it all, keep changing the look, create doubt in his mind. I love to use the term rent space in a quarterback's mind. Make him think. There, Welker went to the inside, Brady through the outside. Covered very well by Corey Ivey. Chris Punt. Chris Hansen's fifth punt tonight. See, his season high was six. Ed Reed goes back to this key one. Not the rookie figures. Plus, they're in a spot on the field where you keep your defense out for a punt safe. Hansen tries to go for the sideline. The wind got him. That's going to be a punt of less than 15 yards. I spoke to Rex Ryan before the game. It was all about getting Tom Brady in third and long, the known passing situations. So far tonight, they've been able to do it. The Patriots one for nine on first down, converting that third down to first down. The punt, 14 yards. The Ravens defense doing a job. And you see Rex with the smile. They'll take over at the 20 seven yard line this is what now jaws their third or fourth time in the half with a chance to go down the field baltimore and they've been three and out the last two or three times yeah, have we, they not tony we could talk about running the ball for 300 yards a game you got to run it now when everyone in the stadium knows you right. must run the football edged up to touch the 28 we're going to throw on first down bowler checks it to mcgahey mcgahey puts a shoulder down into brewski to the 35-yard line. Susie has more on Willis McGahee. Well, you want an indication of how hard these Ravens are playing tonight, leaving nothing on the field. Willis McGahee has been suffering from leg cramps in his thighs, but as we can see, he's been carrying the load, and remember what Brian Billick told us. No team has really tested this Patriots defense by pounding and pounding and pounding late into the fourth quarter. We know they're smart, we know they're experienced, but they're a little bit old, and that was going to be the real test tonight, and it's on Willis's shoulders. Suze McGee, he has 137 of those 165 rushing yards. Second and three, left side. Got about a yard and a half. Vince Wolfert, his former teammate of Miami, had his hand on the ball trying to rip it away. We'll have a key third down coming up as you see the timeout situation. A little bit experienced and a little bit old. Sounds like us, Joss. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself, Tony. Sounds like us. <laughs> Very important call for Brian Billick here on third and two. I did love the first down call. The Patriots are bring, bringing their safety quickly. Rodney Harrison down the box. They went with the play action pass. Got the ball to McGahee out in the flat. Third and about a yard and a half. I think it's a running down. Mike mentioned this before. Everybody in the stadium is standing and has been standing for the last 20 minutes. Tight on the receiver, so there's no space for a quick pass. You saw Belichick move the corner up. Third and two, they are going to throw. And they'll throw to McGahee. Can he beat Harrison? No. Harrison made the play. The ball was down by the contact. It'll be fourth down, and for the second consecutive series, Rodney Harrison has come up with key plays to force the Ravens off the field. We have a timeout taken by New England. Excellent job by Rodney Harrison. Open field tackle on Willis McGahee. Teddy Bruce comes over the top and finishes it off. So the Patriots take their first time out at 341 to maximize the time here that they'll have with the ball. Doesn't it feel like, seriously, that the sands and the hourglass, as they say, are running out on Baltimore at this point? How many times can you give the Patriots the ball late in the game and not expect them to get a touchdown? That, that clock right? can't move fast enough for Brian And it's not moving Brian at all. In the Ravens. No. You're absolutely right. The people right. from Baltimore yeah. are in agony because that clock's not moving. That was the first down they needed right there. They, they're in their four-minute offense right now. They needed to sustain offense, and they didn't. Sam Cook to kick. Another bad kick. Got a good bounce. And it will be 36 yards, stopping dead at the 26-yard line. They're yelling at Derek Martin, let the ball roll. Give us the extra couple of seconds. So with three and a half left, Brady and the offense will come on the field. On a night when Randy Moss has been held to four catches for 34 yards, and Wes Welker has been held to three catches for 18 yards, which of these Patriots receivers? Remember, their top three receivers, Stallworth, Welker, Moss, they weren't here last year. They went out for about a cap number of around $8 million via trade and free agency. They brought in guys who've changed the entire complexion of this team. Now those guys are three and a half minutes with Brady. They are a lot of the opportunity to keep the perfect season alive. Under center and Kevin Falk the back. 
play action. Down the middle. What a hit! Samari Roll, who has missed six games this year, diagnosed with epilepsy, had three seizures, epileptic seizures, couldn't get the medication set properly for him to be able to come back and play, delivers a shot on Dante Solworth. This is the signature of Baltimore. The offense is not going to win this game. They've, won, they've depended on their defense to win games for years. they got to win it on defense again. You're right. This is their opportunity. Right. Second and ten. There's going to be some pressure here. No, they only went with a three-man rush. And Brady throws down the middle. Benjamin Watson with the catch right at midfield. He's touched down there for the first down. Brady throwing between the hash marks to Watson this year is 19 of 19. That's Another pretty good. <laughs> Will that make it 20 of 20? No, that was 19. Oh, that was not. I'm sorry. Jumping ahead of myself. Brady with excellent time in the pocket with the three-man Ravens rush. Waited for Watson to work down the middle of the field against that cover two where those safeties divide. It's a three-man rush. Falk could not bring it in. He felt he had a step on Bart Scott, too, who was trying to accelerate to it. Well, the second down coming up with 2.47 to go. Tom Brady has 72% uh, completions, leading the National Football League coming in. Tonight he is 15 of 31, under 50%. This is the subpar game they said he had last, last week. week. Last week he had 380 yards. This is the subpar game. This is the time when maybe you can beat the New England Patriots. Keyword was maybe. Second and 10, three-man rush. Brady, fault. Got the tackle. Gain of nine. Third and one coming up. What, what Tom will do is be patient. He won't make the mistake that Kyle Bowler made by trying to squeeze the ball in earlier where it shouldn't have gone. He will take what the defense gives him to move the ball down the field. Then he'll take the shot when it presents itself. Third and one. They keep it quick. Going forward to the line at the 40. That'll be a first down for New England. Robert Kraft, the owner for the Patriots, looking for the spot. They do have a first down with the clock running down here to the two-minute warning. Might get one more snap in. They will. Pumping and firing down the middle. It is off the back of the safety, Jermaine Winborn, intended for Watson. Incomplete. At the two-minute warning, the Patriots have the ball at the 40. Their chance for the perfect season on the line. Back to you. Let's see on ESPN Radio 1 Eastern, Scotty. The ball's officially at the 39. Pats have a couple of timeouts. It is second down and 10 for Brady. Personnel you'd expect. Watson with top three receivers and Falk. Welker in motion at the top. Against a five-man rush, Brady got out of the pressure and throws incomplete. The pressure was closing in on him. That is Antoine Barnes again. He has been all over the field, putting pressure on Tom Brady. Third down coming up. He's been playing in pass rush situations the last couple of weeks. Yeah, you'll see Antoine Barnes coming off the edge. Nick Case just couldn't handle the speed and quickness. Got to Brady in a heartbeat. The rookie out of Florida International Forces third and ten. Good pocket, good time. Falk out of the backfield. Runs out of bounds. A yard shy of the first down. Look at the spot there. It's going to be fourth and a yard with the stop clock with a minute 48. So now, of course, it's up to Brady, but it's up to the defensive guys. The Ray Lewis's, the Ed Reeds. Can they come up with a stop that could pull off this huge upset? Fourth and very short. They bunch the middle on Brady, and a timeout is taken. Brady was stopped, but the play was stopped first by a Baltimore sideline call. Oh, 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 what a snap. Baltimore calls it second timeout. Can't you take that one back? There is a disconnect on this team with the defense that has played with passion for seven, eight years to not see the offense come through. And some of that has been manifested in their emotions. And Ed Reed verbalized it to us this week toward Brian Billick, the head coach. It was just one of those frustration moments. They felt they had it. The sideline wanted the timeout. And you saw the players so 
physically frustrated. They their head made coach the stop. The Mike, they made the stop on fourth down. It was one of those snap decisions, ready right? to snap a timeout. Was called. It would have been the Ravens football. The criticism that has been leveled by Ed Reed and by Ray Lewis and Brian Billick is almost always about play calling, though. We the, not about defense. The, the last thing they would have expected is him to take a timeout. And it looked like it was Rex Ryan on the sideline, the defense yeah. corner that signaled for the timeout. Keith Evans is back in. It is still fourth in a yard. And it's Evans now. A whistle oh, here. Was... We may have movement before the snap on the Patriots, which would make it fourth and six. Paul Sark. It's still fourth down. Stephen Neal, the right guard, makes the move prematurely. You'll see the flinch ahead of the snap. Five-yard penalty brings up fourth and six for the Patriots. Pretty much the game on the line right here, gentlemen. This is the perfect season, Mike. You said at the beginning of the show, could Baltimore do the impossible in 2007, beat New England? From the 35. Drive stays alive just past the 30. Welker in motion. Three-man rush. Brady has time. Brady takes off and gets the first down and more. Slides down at the 22 with 100 seconds left. You saw the flag down in the secondary. Near side, well away from the play. The run was 13. And now let's check what the flag is. Illegal contact, number 22, defense. That five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. On Samari roll. So just go back. They had it stopped on the fourth and one, called the timeout. False start, fourth and six. Brady scramble. Then this violent takedown by Roll, who says, wait a minute, Moss overtook me, brings the Patriots into the red zone at the 18-yard line. Two timeouts, 98 seconds. Moss at the top of the screen. Inside handoff, Falk eludes the Nata tackle, and Elote comes back to get him at the 13-yard line. With a buck 27 in a turning clock, GMC, Monday Night Football postgame. Steve Young, Emmett Smith, Sal Palantonio here in Baltimore. The baseball story and the passing of Sean Taylor remembered in Miami. Nata comes off the field, Kelly Gregg back in. And not as been a force tonight. From the 13. Time for Brady, deflected in the air, and incomplete. Third down coming up. Not, no wonder Warner nobody's Lewis. sitting down here. Yeah. <laughs> We're not sitting down, nobody's sitting down here. Normally a ball that is tipped this high in the air is picked off. Ray Lewis bats the ball in the air. Corey Ivy had his back to the ball or probably would have made the interception. It falls to the ground. They can get a first down just shy of the eight-yard line. 13 yards for the go-ahead touchdown. It looks like the Ravens are going to bring some heat here over the left side of Tom Brady. Will the middle of the field be open? Brady, time, throws, incomplete. And again, fourth down. And again, the perfect season's on the line. Jermaine Winborn got in there. So Bob Kraft, the owner, has put together the Bill Belichick masterpiece plan. Executed to perfection on the field by Brady, who's having his toughest night of the season. And this record crowd of 71,382 in Baltimore. Urge Ray Lewis and the defense on as Moss and company will take a timeout to come up with the play. 55 seconds left. Fourth down coming up. It's fourth down. They need 13 yards for the touchdown. Five for the first down. They could have had a stop on fourth down a few plays ago. Yeah, and you'll see Rex Ryan right here on the sideline. He will signal the play. Timeout, timeout, timeout before the ball is snapped. That was the last fourth down. Here's another one. Okay, you're going to have Moss and Welker close to you with Dante Stallworth up at the top. Benjamin Watson, the tight end, is up there as well.
11 and 0 comes down to this snap again. Brady looks left, comes back right, puts it up for grabs. It's the flick and flag down. A hold on the Ravens. It will be first down for New England inside the 10 with 50 seconds remaining in the game. Holding number 28, defense. Five yard penalty, first down. Jermaine Winborn, the third year man out of Virginia, who's played well tonight with a lot of coverage there. There's a phrase that English majors like to use, <laughs> and it's tragic inevitability. Oh. And as you watch this, you watch the Patriots get closer and closer and closer, and they get reprieves on every fourth down, just like they did there. Uh, there was How the call many on can Benjamin, you get? There was the call on Benjamin right. Watson that was the flag. So from the eight, first and goal. Gaffney down here, bottom of the screen. Five options for Brady. The pump, the throw. It is caught for the touchdown by Gaffney. And New England leads. 26-24, and immediately Kraft is thinking, did he get inbounds with possession? And will it be looked at from upstairs? A flag comes down now here after the play. Does he have control of that ball as he's cradling it on the way out? Well, let's get a look from the side. You'll see right here. He, does he have complete control of the football? I can't see it from that angle. There are two fouls on the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 57, defense. That foul occurred after the touchdown, and that 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Following that, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 57, defense, throwing the official flag into the stands. That 15-yard penalty will also be assessed on the kickoff. Those two are on Bart Scott. So that's 30 yards back on the kickoff. Now, let's look at this one. Will it be looked at via review? And all replay questions in the last two minutes are buzzed down from the replay booth to the official. Does Gaffney have control of the ball? Is he still juggling before that second foot comes down? And now Walt Anderson will go over for a look. I think, Jaws. That is it? very, very close. How do you interpret control of the football? He did have fingertips on it. And then the right hand comes down off of it as that second foot is down. He does not have secure two hands on the ball and step step, Boy, which is what you usually it, look for. Would you have to overturn that call because the call on is the field is touchdown. So he is looking in review at the touchdown that will put the Patriots ahead. Be right back. Okay, so we're under review with the touchdown. Did Jabbar Gaffney have complete control of the ball to put the Patriots ahead? And here's the call. After reviewing the play, the running on the field is confirmed. The receiver has control of the ball. The two feet in. It is a touchdown. And it's 26-24. Now you're going to have those multiple fouls on the kickoff, which is going to make it very, very difficult for Baltimore to get back in field goal range. Here is the decision. And the ruling is that he ends up and gets control of it. And boy, that is really by a hair keeping he, a perfect season he alive. He kept his fingertips on the football. If there would have been space between his fingertips and the football, I think it would have been overturned. But Jabbar Gaffney kept his fingertips on the football. Therefore, the correct call, a touchdown. And offside on the extra point is Ed Reed. So this that attack on of penalties yeah, is really getting ridiculous now. Offside, number 20, defense. That five-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. That's I think 3,000 yards. I think. I think. Hang on a second. I think they're going to kick off from the 35-yard line of the Ravens. <laughs> He might that should be an onside kick. That should be 35 <laughs> yards worth of penalties right. on that. Bart Scott was called for unsportsmanlike after the touchdown. Then he picked up the flag and threw it in the stands. So that added to the 15 with Not 15 smart. more. 
Meantime, in all of this and the replay, what a job by Brady and the Patriots of converting under pressure, yeah. going downfield, using multiple receivers, and the patience in the pocket on a night when he has been hit. Kostowski adds the extra point, and the New England Patriots, 13 plays, 73 yards down the field. The eight-yard touchdown pass to Gaffney. The Ravens had him stopped. They had the game essentially in their hands. And the meltdown continues. Bart Scott being taken away by Terrell Suggs. The flag was thrown first on Scott, and he took it. And that certainly will be a fine on top of the other 15 yards of penalty that he gets. As uh, this meltdown comes at the back end of a night when Baltimore played its defensive heart out. They have played 60 minutes with unquestioned intensity and emotion. And that's what happens when likely well, you're going to lose the game. This game's not over yet. The Ravens well, still have a timeout. Wow. This is why players and coaches, as Brian Billick said the other day, use the word snake bit. When you get to a season, you were 13 and 3 last year. You're 4 and 7 now, losing 5 in a row. And as Denny Green said last year, they had them where they wanted them tonight. They knew who they were, they had them where they wanted them. I used that phrase before tragic inevitability because Tom Brady can do that. Tom Brady went down the field at the last possible moment. Did he get lucky with calls? Sure, maybe he did. Did he get lucky when Baltimore called a timeout and the Patriots were stopped? Of course he did. But luck is the residue of design. When he had the opportunity to make the touchdown play, he did. And Brian Billick knows what's going on and knows that this game is gone. Okay, to the game here. They're going to kick off from the plus 35. So essentially, Gostowski will just blast this into the back of the end zone for the touchback. Then, when Baltimore gets the ball, they will be going into the wind. So it's going to be hard for them to throw the ball down the field. And the Ravens down to one timeout on top of that. Right, but they only need a field goal. There is a little bit of saving grace in there. They don't have to go whatever the distance will be. They'll have to get probably to the 30, uh, probably 25. maybe the 25-yard line, yeah. kicking into that wind. And, of course, uh, the wind is gusting. It would be into Stover's face. They're going to have to go 55 yards because Gustavsky's just going to blast this through the goal post, you would imagine. More to the right of it. And the Ravens will take over at the 20-yard line. Well, you talk about those penalties, and you say, well, it's just a motion at the end of the game. But on a night where the wind is so tough and you can return kicks, that's a killer. That is an absolute killer. Pro Bowl player. Bart Scott. Pro Bowl player. Well, that's the intensity of the game. It, it happens. You snap. You lose it. I mean, this the, the defense has played their hearts out, and they felt they had a couple calls go against them. You know, we have seen this in the NFL right now. These, I don't want to say call them ticky-tack fouls, but you can't touch a receiver down the field. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's amazing some of the calls that are made week in and week out. Okay, they probably need 55 yards to get in field goal range to tie the game. 44 seconds and one timeout. Bowler will throw a screen first, and here goes Musa. Smith into the Patriots secondary and brought down at the 33-yard line by Asante Samuel. Half minute on the turning clock. And confusion. Inexplicable and unexcusable. Bowler throws over the middle of the clock. They have to take a timeout here. Mason at the 44, 41-yard line, I should say. Forward progress will mark him at the 44. Timeout comes. They're last with 14 seconds remaining in the game. Now, when we hit the two-minute warning and the Patriots are driving, here was Matt Stover in the just-in-case mode. The kicker has been with this franchise since their Cleveland days. Yeah. Just in case, he wanted to go through the visualization of potentially making a field goal. But to get that, they're going to have to hit an out pattern. Jaws with 14 seconds. They have time to use the middle of the field and clock it? I don't think so. No, they can't go the middle of the field. Not, not enough time to get the offense back down there to do the clock. They're going to have to get to the sidelines or throw one of those Hail Mary, Big Ben, whatever you want to call it. Possibly maybe get an interference call or a great catch. The one thing you can't have is a sack right now. Bowler's got to get the ball down the field. They probably need 30 yards. The Patriots are going to take time out, I believe, here. So the New England Patriots and Baltimore Ravens out of timeout. What's next for the Patriots? The Steelers, who looked good last night at home in the rain again, by the way. <laughs> right. Yep. 
uh, against Pittsburgh, a team that is uh, one four and one against Bill Belichick's Patriots during Bill's stay in New England. Then the return against the Jets and Eric Mangini. Remember, of course, it was the Jets game. That's where seventy to nothing. Spygate came up. <laughs> That's the winless nothing. Dolphins. That's a hundred to nothing. And then the Giants. Yeah, well, on a Saturday night to close the season. And remember this: the other part of that is, if the Patriots win this, and then the next two. They will have clinched the number one seed all the way through. So they're going to have two weeks of the question, do you get some rest? You're looking at they will play you Watch to win. this game yeah. tonight with your own eyes. If the Patriots win this game, how could you possibly think anybody's going to beat them if this is the one they win? Come on. Yeah, th this is the one. Uh, you know, last week the Eagles gave them a run. This week, the, they, I were mean, done they, were down for the, they were down for the eight count here, yes. you know? They yeah. got off the mat. Rodney Harrison is out of the game, is grabbing his hamstring after the last play. Brendan Merriweather out of Miami is in. Bowler throwing deep, and it is dropped by Merriweather, who just came in the game with eight seconds left. That play would have ended the game because it was in the middle of the field. So now eight seconds, and pretty much... Sideline hits the fan in the yeah. Ray Lewis jersey knew, knew the knows the deal. It's got to be sidelines here, otherwise the game's going to end. Well, not necessarily. You know, the, he Kyle threw that up the seam. I believe if Mason would have kept running, there could have been a collision. He could get the interference call, but he slowed down. Maybe I'm looking for some silver lining here. I, I but think I, you I, might. Hey, think. Yeah. Why, why don't you just say the immaculate reception? Uh, well, could happen. It, it wow. might happen. <laughs> Three think, receivers to the right side, one to the left. Bowler steps up as hard as he can throw it. It's going to be shy of the goal line, but on the deflection, it is he caught, but shy of the end zone, oh. and the game ends. Oh. Caught by Mark Clayton. He caught it. Down at the two, no flags, no time, and by a hair, the New England perfect season remains alive. 12-0, taken to the end by Baltimore. But the Patriots' pursuit of perfection continues 27-24. Ryan Billick, Bill Belichick, the handshake. And the Ravens lose their sixth consecutive game, fall to four and eight. 52 yards on the Hail Mary, but a couple of yards shot. And Bowler does a great job of getting air under this. He gets it right to the goal line. A jump ball. <laughs> Mark Clayton goes up. That's uh, the we wow. saw this in a Super Bowl with the wow. Rams in Tennessee. You get oh so close, but you don't get in. It's a good thing that that play didn't go into the end zone because Derek Mason tackles, tackles. <laughs> Look at Asante yeah, Samuel. Well, hey. That is offensive <laughs> pass interference to the end. They're degree. not going to call it. Not at this point oh, in the game. My goodness. How close can you get if you're Baltimore? You had the game won. Yeah. You did everything you could have been asked to do. You did it on defense. You got enough offense. You had them reeling, standing eight count, and you didn't win it. Much more on Sports Center. Susie Culver, Michelle Tafoya, Tony Kornheiser, Ron Jaworski, Mike Tirico. Good night from Baltimore. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. The Patriots remain perfect. See you in Atlanta.